Mr. Great American Rugby himself, Lance Kavanaugh. How we doing? Let me let me let me get this. I haven't been in the Ooh, I haven't man. been in the whole way yet. Let's get let's get back to it. Let's man, get back to it. How you doing, Dustin? How you looking? I, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. It is um, Mr. Uh, faster than a Ferrari, Dylan Ferracci. Uh, Took his sweet old time getting home today, so we're uh, we're, we're we're doing all right. We're with, gonna, with, we're gonna figure with the, with, the, with the excuse, I'm supporting my school. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, New England. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> supporting his school. <laughs> oh, fun! I got to get all my all my setup going on. All oh, do my eyes be deceiving me? Charles is balling. I don't know if you're talking about Lance or if you're talking about me. Yeah, that's my guy. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's my guy. That's my oh. Guy. Eli, yes, I I know the uh, the uh, the shirt. By the way, I gotta get a little props out. Of, yeah, got a little little kudas action going on here. Oh, by the way, in the back, like, check this one out. That right there, this one that is uh, I think it was World Cup um, or close to the World Cup Hawks jersey signed. Yeah, love that. And then uh, we don't. I don't have the sponsorship over there, but this is Oregon Rugby League. That's their kits that came out. Um, very few really? people have those yet. Yeah, I know, right? So, uh, really? lots of yeah, lots you of know, good stuff. You know, what I gotta get my hands on. I gotta get my hands on some dead pelicans. I'm right. I gotta get. I gotta get my hands on some dead pelicans. Hey, man, they are the national champions of the. Uh, they are the national champions. Uh, you can get uh, national championship gear. You know where you can get that, Lance? Where can I get that? Man, you can get that at rugbyleagueinamerica.net. Also, the second round of orders uh, for all those that, uh, you know, have orders in. Um, this is the combination we've been waiting for. Actually, it's the live version we've been waiting for, Charles. So that's going to be. <laughs> oh, man. We have a uh, we got a show. Oh, but oh, real quick. Go back. Um, the second round of orders for the vintage inspired 1953 um, USA All-Stars Rugby League jerseys. We're going to be taking those again. Um, the first round is finishing up and should be delivered probably within the next uh, couple of weeks. So all that, uh, yeah, Ariel got that. Um, all the uh, all the gear uh, that got ordered, all the people that ordered the first round. Uh, there's going to be a bonus in that uh, in that package since you guys were the first people to order those 53 vintage uh, replica inspired kits. Uh, so if you ordered one, you got some fun stuff coming for you right now. So that'll be um, that'll be good stuff. Um, Lance, this is live show. Um, we have not. You and I actually have not done a live show. We've never as, done a live as, show. As bananas as that is, um, that's strange. You know, it, 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 <laughs> right? We've done a lot of shows. Um, it's a bit. It's I've I've been I've been gone for a while. Like I was on vacation, so um, I've been out. If you saw the post a couple couple days ago, really, really sorry about um, you know missing the the mark on the uh, women's America's Championship, um, Courtney Trico. I'm very sorry. I am going to get your interview out, though. I promise you. Um, and so we'll get some other stuff going on because um, it was a great interview with Courtney. She's a fantastic, uh, fantastic person, and you know she's playing hopefully she'll be playing over in super league she plays in the uh in the south um with the london broncos right now but hopefully she'll be moving up in uh, let's see uh, is it dylan trying to come back in on my come on screen really, on my screen i see dylan down here in his little person in like the three person there we go there we go yep all right dylan. can you hear us now yes sir all right all right all right so let's kick this off. Um, I want to. I want to. Let me actually. Let me get my my screen open here, so I can tell everybody what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, man, uh, big show. Um, so 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 I'll kick it off as I normally do, since we're going to take this and actually turn it into the podcast. So if you jump on and we can chat, um, Ryan Burrows, I saw you're in here. I'll see if you're still there. I do want to come to you. We'll chat about some stuff with you as well. Um, but yes, I did see you, you were here. If you're still here, cool. If you're not, he is. Nice he is. In here. All right. Nice. Um, all right. So this is episode 226 of Rugby League in America. This is Rugby League in America live, uh, October 11th, 9 p.m. Uh, this is, I know somebody said it was going to be 
Rome Rugby. Oh, look, my man. Hey. Kentucky's favorite son. Sorry. Uh, so for those of you listening on the podcast, um, we're going to have people come on, hopefully talk as much as we possibly can with as many people as we possibly can. But we also have a lot of things that we got to touch base on. Um, it is the end of the seasons and, you know, we're, it's been, it's been crazy. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff go on. Uh, so here's kind of a quick rundown of what we're going to talk about. Are you ready? Gentlemen, we're going to start off. We're going to talk USARL and RLU finals. We're going to talk about the Toronto Wolfpack for all of you Canadians uh, that are on here. Eh? Um, and then we're going to talk America's championship down there in Kingston, Jamaica. A lot of great stuff that happened down there. We're going to talk about the NRL. What's up? Do we have some, uh, do we have some news about that? <laughs> <We're> working on it. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, um, we'll, we'll see where this goes. Uh, we're going to talk about the USA men's selection. And uh, here we go. And the here controversy. Uh, that's probably going to light people up. So we'll probably move through some of this other stuff as fast as we can. <laughs> um, and, and then um, I do want to talk about um, the IRL um, World Cup slash World Series qualifications that just came out, uh, you know, this whole thing about the World Series coming up. Um, there's a lot of questions. People came to me and like, is the, does the USA get to play um, as of right now? No, uh, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so let's kick it off. RL, uh, it's RLU Finals. Uh, we have Mr. Ryan Burroughs on there. We'll, we'll bring him on in here in a little bit because I do want to hear from him on some stuff. Uh, DC defeated Brooklyn 40 to 22. DC goes undefeated on the RLU season. Dylan, you're from the Northeast. Was it even close with the other teams? Not really. really. <laughs> <laughs> you, you paused and you're like, I'm out. We'll see. It, well, like, I played for Boston last year in 2022. I have a lot of friends in Brooklyn and a lot of friends in DC, a couple of friends in Delaware. And Delaware. Had some good competition with Boston, but those were the lower end of the tier. And then it was really just Brooklyn and DC yeah. pounding on them all season. And DC just had a great roster, and they have an experienced guy like Ryan Burroughs leading the charge. Yep. Brian, he's Captain America for RB League. And he's one of the first people you think of when you think of the Hawks. Yeah. So. Oh, um, it was pre-pandemic. Um, so having a guy like that on your roster, especially with a code like Rugby League, which is not as popular as we're seeing now, like with the reemergence of the West Coast yeah. and the reforming of the Northeast, um, that definitely helps your club. And looking forward, I'm hope I'm hoping to see the RLU expand a little more in the Northeast, if we can get those teams and th those numbers up. Yeah, for sure. Lance, what are your, your kind of your take on, on the season for RLU? Um, you know, it's four teams right now, home and away for all of them. And then a semifinals and a, and a grand final to kind of take everything off. It, it is one of those, it was competitive. I actually got to see a match. I gave y'all the wrong score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, you made us made us look made us look bad, man. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I gave you the scores in the third quarter and forgot to update you at the final whistle. But now, the, um, that game was competitive. Uh, DC and, and and Brooklyn. Yeah. And I'm I was expecting a a, a dog fight, and it kind of got away from uh Brooklyn a little bit at the end. But DC, like. It was kind of clear why DC is really good. Like they pretty much established why. Like everything was earned. At bare minimum, you want to make sure every everybody who score against you got to earn their buckets, and that's pretty much was the case. DC scored like two easy ones, and then uh, Brooklyn had to like really compete and fight for every like meter that they got. So that's like a sign of of, of really the the team really. So I'm not surprised at all. But we you know we can get it we can get into the player player for player. Later, when we start talking about what we talk about later, all right? So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna let it rock for now, but later on, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's it, it's a great season for for DC. Um, I mean, gr great season for RLU. First season on, in the books. Um, you know, they've got you know four teams up there. 
you know, I talked with Chris Martin, who's kind of uh, leading the nonprofit action behind everything up there. He's he wants to do a lot of things. I've talked with Ryan. I've talked with everybody. You know, uh, podcast. We, you know, uh, what is it? We, <coughs> excuse me. We had um, we had Peter Lupton on there from from Boston, who's doing some great stuff. You know, the teams up there. You know, I think that they've got a good core, and I believe that there's going to be some good stuff coming in the future for RLU. I know that there's, you know, all kinds of questions that people have about, you know, how do you grow? How do you build on that? I know, how do you, you know, less parity <laughs> or more parity, excuse me. Um, so it's a little bit more even throughout, um, you know, will the fight ever come back, you know, there in Philly? I don't know. Um, can we, can we bring back the, uh, the Connecticut Wildcats? Can we bring back Rhode Island? Can we bring back Jim Powers, our, our old friend? Can we bring back Oneida FC once again? He, I think he'd love that. But, you know, in, in our case right now, um, you know, I think a solid kick to this kick off to the first year. Um, can only see him grow in the future. Funny how you mentioned Connecticut. I've heard some whispers and rumors about a team from Connecticut wanting to play Toronto. A team from Connecticut? That means there'd have to be rugby league players in Connecticut ready to play, right? <laughs> are they hiding from us? Are they, are they practicing a, in secret? Like, they're, they're, they're moving in the shadows, who, man. Moving in the shadows. <laughs> uh, I've also... They camouflage is what we're going to call it. Oh, I like that. Little, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> the Connecticut camouflage, a little alliteration. We like that. So. Uh, playing Union. What's that? Blue. They've been playing Union, mostly Union. Yeah. Well, they're gonna get roasted then. That's L- not, listen, uh, um, what are we doing? I, I can't. I, 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 we can't keep doing. I, let's get the league. Like, if you want to build, like, let's build a team. Like, listen, I understand. Well, that's a whole nother. You know, Charles be balling his and like, I'll believe it when I see it, and I, I will too. Like, it's hard. Like, we gotta. Yeah. We all see what happens when all union people go and try to play league. You know, for a, a couple games. It's not exactly not the same. Lots of penalties. Lots of bad passes. Look at. But, I know yeah. all about it. I know all about it. That's yep. why I, so, okay. I said they'll get smoked. Like it's no point. What are we doing? Like yeah. move, move along. Move, but no, move along. But but it is it is nice to see like these teams that are like reaching up to try to play Toronto. That's something I actually and even though you know Toronto are gonna lean on them, probably beat them by a lot. The fact what, that. What, oh. We'll talk about that, Toronto in a minute here. Like that's 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 a whole if, other story. If they have a if they got an under team that they that these teams can play, I think that'd be great. I'd like to see play the Tor- Toronto whoop, like but let's the, play the Saints fucking. first. Let's play the Saints, let's play the Beavers, let's play the Broncos. Yeah, there we go. Up in there yeah. in Toronto. Let's there play those guys up in the greater Tor- Toronto area. Uh yeah. for all the Canadians up there. You know, ROBC, that's a that's a long flight. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um all right. So the RLU, we'll come come back. I'd like to talk with Ryan here in a little bit, but we have the USARL Grand Final National Championship, whatever you want to call it, uh, called something different everywhere. Uh, I think Dylan has departed from us because he's probably going to the bathroom or something. Uh, <laughs> um, Lance, this game, um, a, a tale of two halves, if you will. Um, that's kind of how I wrote it in our, in our breakdown. Um, Dead Pelicans make the long trip, five and a half hours. Even in direct flight, it's like a five and a half hour flight from from San Francisco to Jacksonville. But I don't even think you can get a direct flight. But um, make the long flight. You know they, you know halftime score twelve six, uh, and then at the at, at the very end um, they started just um, hammering it home and they win twenty to sixteen. Dead Pelicans first year for the PCRL yeah. in in USARL and. Oh, they go to Jacksonville, the defending national champions, the defending, you know, obviously they've been around for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've got the team the history. The they've got everything. Yeah. Right. They, they were kings of the mountain and they went down there and won. Like, and it wasn't, you, know, they, you could go back and watch a game. It was uh, hotly contested. That's for sure. It, it's nice to see that. I didn't think that that was a hope. Like a team can show up. And not only compete, but beat teams along the way, and then beat Jacksonville. Yeah. And I, I can I can understand the first year team playing in Jacksonville how loopy that can get, yeah. right? But for this team to come from the West Coast, and that's the thing, the Dead Pelicans have been finding their way uh, in Florida a lot. They've been finding their way playing some rugby in Florida a lot. They make a lot of moves this way, so yeah. 
for them to come back and 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 take the whole enchilada to me is like a perfect story for them. Yeah. But now, but now it's what do we build? Like the the next step because it's only gonna get harder for them from here on out. There's no right. There's no easy path, especially as we've seen with Utah finding their way. They finding their legs. Who knows what can happen? And like you know, hate I, I don't. I don't like to say this because I think the guys, the Dead Pelicans, played a fantastic game. Watched it was great. That was the the runner up to they were the runners up in the West Coast Championship. You know, Provo beat them thirty to. I don't remember. Shoot, <laughs> um, I have to go back and take a look. Um, ineligible player. Yeah, you had one, one ineligible player. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. I know, and and, and you know. I want, we want, go back and watch some of that game. You talk to the guys. The guy, the ineligible player, only played in the first half. Didn't make an impact, and the, you know. So then you go to the question: What would have happened if, big if, right? If Provo goes down there, beat the, the Dead Pelicans by fifteen plus points because I can't remember the score because it was so long ago. Uh, what would they have done? The Jacksonville. Big questions. Big questions. Are you serious? I forgot. I forgotten and had to get re reminded about that. <laughs> that is, uh, that Ooh, changes every. So now it's, it's back to the old. Is is West Coast rugby better than? Uh, oh, you no man. Come on, it's gonna it's gonna happen all the time. Hey, that's a new man, argument. Let's talk about. It. We we gonna come back to that, yeah. but uh, real quick, we have a we have a star who's joining us right now. Legendary. Legendary. Mister. Chasing kangaroos himself, Michael Carbone. Good to see you, Mike. Hope you're doing well down there. We miss you. Come back. Come back, please. We're lost without you. Chasing the <laughs> uh, Excited to see Domestic Cup compete regionally. Ah, yes, absolutely. Um, that's a whole other topic. I want to dive into that in the, uh, you know, in, in in the off season as <laughs> we kind of end some stuff here. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to talk about like domestic cup, how we grow that, how we do some great stuff here in the U S. Okay. Going back US Aerial final. Um, you know, I, I went through, I actually kept stats for the entire match Lance, and went back and realized that, um, the dead Pelicans had 14 tackles inside their own 20 in the first half, which is why, um, the score was 12 to 6. Um, did really well. They defended like uh, madmen, if you will. Um, and then 11 penalties. So that the tale of two halves, if you will. Even in the second half, as they continued to play really well, uh, they ended up having like the, Jacksonville just couldn't finish. They couldn't yeah. get across the line. Yeah. 32 tackles, 30, 32 um, inside their own 20, the Dead Pelicans had. For the entire match, Jacksonville had six. Jacksonville had sixteen. Sixteen penalties for the Dead Pelicans. So it wasn't the cleanest of games. Right. Big telltale sign. Uh, first half completed sets five and nine for the X Men, five of eleven for the Pelicans. Second half complete turnaround. Um, ended up being thirteen for twenty three for the Dead Pelicans and ten for twenty. So I, I think one of the big things we're seeing. You know, in some of these matches, is kind of this. What's the word I'll use? You know, uh, efficiency, and yes. the more efficient you can be overall, the you know, more times you can complete your sets, get your kicks off, the better you off you're going to be. That echoes a lot about Jacksonville because they've always been a team that can that complete sets. They're all they always been a team that control the field, and that's pretty much what uh, coach coaching is all about. He he actually talked about it. He actually talked about it while we were playing, like mid game. Like you guys got to control the field. So to see them, not at, not, I don't understand them, them having a lot of penalties. That don't seem very Jacksonville, especially in the championship game where they've been into a bunch of them over the last five, four or five years. Yeah. But I mean, and Pelicans found their opportunities. You said tell it to. Here he go. Here he go. Welcome back. Welcome back. The train station and pick up my sister. Oh my god. Oh, that could be his bit. <laughs> That's his That's bit. His... <laughs> For all of you listening, uh Dylan has left and come back five times in, in twelve minutes. <laughs> okay. So USARL, great season overall. Uh ex exciting season, right? 
12 rookies are on the Axman team this season. That's exciting. I mean, yeah, I know they're 12 rookies. He has a lot of experience on there, too. So. Yeah. But yes, 12 rookies is great. Um, those are numbers that I like to see. The question is, can we expand that out? Can we continue to grow um, and have 20 rookies next season and have like a B side? Because I mean, I think it would be great. Um, okay. We have now USARL, RLU done. Four teams in the Northeast with RLU. We've got four teams in the Southeast with uh, USARL South. And then out West, you've got Utah Rugby League that's got four teams. And you've got the PCRL, which has four teams. So rocking it. But there's also whispers and rumors. You know, we, we've heard rumors of an Alabama team. Um, obviously, um, I know that, you know, Gary and Casey here in, uh, in North Carolina, we have the Carolina storm who play mm-hmm. nine, sevens, tens, fifteens, thirteens, yeah. you name it, they play it. Yeah. Um, those folks are really great. And then of course, you know, California, you're, there's a couple teams out there from the old championship rugby, the okay. California rugby league yeah. that are still in the wings. You know, yeah, you've got, you've got some teams that could I heard rejoin. Of, heard of Tennessee team? Nashville. <laughs> we got, yeah, so wait, so we got Nashville, two, two Nashville, Nashville teams, Nashville. right? So you've got you've got the Highwaymen, which and then and then you've got this the new Tennessee team, which is tied in with this Tennessee elite, and we might know some people on there. So there's yeah. some whispers and rumors that yeah. we need to confirm before we yeah. throw some stuff out there. So well, that's it, a. <laughs> it ain't whispers and rumors. I mean, they made. It. Oh my bad, Dylan. Oh no, so, uh, they made an Instagram note. Yeah, they got a coach. Announced their head coach. So boom, boom, they they have that's a team. An an ORL, Oregon Rugby League, Willamette Valley Hay Balers. I see you. I got you, Nick. I, I Cleveland you. Rugby League. Oh, Cleveland. God, just get some together. And Cleveland play some Rugby games. League. <laughs> Cleveland Rugby League. They had a lot of girls on the USA team. So that, they count that that. I love that. So, okay, let's let's close uh, that chapter. Let's talk about. Um, I, I want to. I'm going to take a step back, right? Because uh, I, I think I don't know if Ryan is still on there. Uh, Ryan, if you're on, just send a, send the message that you're still on here because we'll bring you on and talk. Still on here. Is he still on? All right. Yeah. All right. Let, let me. I'm going to bring. Uh, we'll bring our our first guest who's on here. Uh, you know, Ryan Burrows on. Talk, we'll talk a little bit about what, what happened with the, the U.S. men's national teams. Like, sure, we're going to skip ahead to all the good stuff. Uh, we, we were <laughs> real deal left. Who would have thought? Real deal gone. Shout out to the real. Shout out that, to the real. That's, a, that's okay. So let, let, let's, let's, get, let's bring Ryan on here. Let's see if we got. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Burroughs. Are, oh, ba- are you in the bar? I sure am. <laughs> That's very rugby league of you right Dude, there, my man. I, uh, tore my, I tore my hamstring in a union game, so I'm, I'm done for the season. So. Serves, serves you right. <laughs> Playing that 15 aside thing. <laughs> uh, you'll have to check out our, uh, our latest um, Instagram reel. Uh, which I think is one of the funniest reels I've ever seen about uh, about, about union rugby. Um, but it's great, um, Ryan. I'm gonna I'm gonna give people a breakdown real quick, and then I want to talk to you about um, not just the RLU season, DC, and the great things that you guys are doing, but I want to talk about the U.S. men's selection. So let me uh, bequeath unto all listeners what I know and what we know as a team. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, it was uh, announced and team and players were announced, um, DC players, Brooklyn players, teams from all, players from all over, uh, for the U.S. men's national team selection to go down and play Jamaica. Um, there were some, I mean, obviously, players like yourself, Ryan, you know, experience, been on the team multiple times, you know, Hawks um, uh, many times over, uh, no problem, love that, it's great. And there's some young guys, right? So, uh, Lucius, um, mm-hmm. uh, Gen- Gen- uh, Genesis, and um, and Carlos Ve- uh, Vegarama. How did I say that? Vegarano. Vegarano. Sorry, Carlos, if you're ever if you're here. He's actually listening. Carlos Vegarano the third, but oh, the third man. Okay, now I feel really bad. That's that's like royalty. <laughs> um, real deal. I think once back in, but I'm going to hold off and bring him in for a minute because just so many people get <laughs> all over the place. Um, 
So all these players were selected. The big controversy that was kind of a, that surrounded everything was not a single person from the list that we received was listed was from the West Coast. Um, you had players. You had you know, Ryan. You guys had three players. You had a couple players from Boston, Brooklyn. Um, uh, Kyle Granby, I think, was on there too. Yeah. I think Kyle, so. Kyle. Um, so and I think that was his first selection too. Um, I, I I recorded this in the podcast that didn't come out because I lost my audio. I absolutely agree that all these players should have been selected. There should have been a, a team of thirty, a group of thirty guys selected. Whittle it down to twenty five to go down to Jamaica as a traveling squad to go and play. Um, congratulations to the guys that were selected. You busted your ass season. I watched as many games as I could, and I can see the players that got selected, why they were selected in certain cases. The big issue that everybody had with it, and that I kind of had with it, is nobody from the West Coast was selected. Nobody from the national championship winning team, Dead Pelicans, not even, our, I say, the uh, Rugby League in America's man of the match or MVP or whatever you want to call it, um, that, that I selected because I watched a match. Uh, I selected Andre Whalen. I think I thought he was a fantastic uh, second rower, absolutely ran all over people. Um, unfortunately, nobody out there was selected, and that got a shitstorm to say for, for, for better or worse um, what we know as of right now and Ryan will we'll come to you here as well um, since that happened um, I did get we'll say called out um, <laughs> I did get called out by some people within the USARL saying I shouldn't have posted that but you know I wanted to raise the question on why why did it happen why did um, Sean Rucker said why did he select that um, why did he select that group of people and not select anybody from the west coast definitely people from Utah I felt definitely people from Utah and from you know California should have been selected you know, it's just like everybody, right? But there are certain players that should be selected. We want the best team to go play. Since then, apparently there have been meetings, there have been discussions, and Ryan will come to you here for, for confirmation. The players from the RLU have since been deselected from the squad, and I know of no update of anybody that's actually been labeled as playing i know the offer was put I, I, I believe you are still selected because of your experience um you know and your because you've had multiple caps correct yes so um really what it all comes down to is it, it is kind of mind-blowing to me that no one from the west coast was selected um and that kind of goes to we got to have people on the West Coast side of this country that are involved in the selection process or something to where they're doing their due diligence on players throughout the entire season. Um, so to guys from the, I, I forgot the team, the, was it the Bron something Broncos that the a team that originally yeah. beat the Pelicans? And yeah, Pro yeah, Provo Broncos were the, were the original yeah, champions. So, so there's no one from that team. There's no one from the dead Pelicans, right? Like that's, if you, if you look in the past history of all of the World Cup qualifying teams, the domestic games, anything like that, typically the team that wins a national championship has the most players right. representing the Hawks, um, realistically. So, uh, and that's no shade at, at Retro or anything. I love Retro. Like, that's, that's just me just, like, saying, you know, that's, that's kind of how I feel. Um the unfortunate part about it, because the ROU was not under the uh, umbrella of um, the USARL. Uh, and I, so me, me personally, this is how I feel. This is just me, me speaking. Um, if players from the West Coast were selected, there would be no issue with the RLU players being in the USA Hawks. Um, I, don't so, I don't think there would have been a single issue across the board if you select five, five or six guys. And, yeah, that, and, so, that, and that gives you your 23, 24 man roster to go down and play. Yeah. So, um, so this whole, this whole thing probably doesn't even become such a shit show that it has, yeah. uh, excuse my language. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh, Lance, Lance, he said the S word on this show, oh uh, on this show, <laughs> oh my son God. of a bitch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, this is, I'll pour one out here just to, to make sure that uh, we can, 
because we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So I just need to make sure that we're. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so basically <laughs> if you, uh, if you, if you select, you know, yeah, like you said, five, six guys from the West coast from, you know, uh, there, there's diamonds in the rough out there for sure. Like there's, I'm sure there's guys from the Oregon league, uh, dead Pelicans, the, the Broncos, Utah, um, there's guys out there. Right. But that's where it becomes a recruiting thing. Like, <laughs> What are the coaches doing to go out and and see what these guys are are capable of, yeah. right? And, so, me, and, there, and there and there was there actually was a um, yeah, retro this, we actually this, did yeah, about, so. I know, but this this camps fucking suck, dude. Like, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're terrible. They don't uh, any of the camps. Like usually, it's like stupid passing drills or something like that. It's never like a full live. <laughs> Uh, so, so you're saying I've got a chance if I go to and do well in these <laughs> passing drills. My 40 year old ass, uh, <laughs> Copperheads RLSC says no selection committee. Yeah, uh, which is interesting. They're, they're they're correct. Um, so like, and ultimately, uh, this is where um, I would say you know, and to to defend Retro, uh, he is, is the head coach, so he does get the final say. Like, there's no board, there's no anything that should go above him or behind his back and 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 do do whatever it is. Now, I, I can't speak for anything involving the selection process. I have nothing to do with that. The only thing I'm upset about is that I had two guys who busted their ass, uh, Genesis Lucius and Carlos Fajerato, who were told that they were going to represent their country in a game versus Jamaica, and then it was taken away from them, yeah. Yeah. right? So for me, I, I've been fortunate enough. I, I've been doing it for a long time, since 2015. So, yeah. uh, like... Seasoned veteran is what we like to call you. <laughs> I'm old, man. That's <laughs> what I am. I'm yeah. old. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, that's, but, that's what sucks. But, but, that's let what me sucks ask you this, right? Because they're... So no, no select process I, I and I love the people commenting and I'm, I'm gonna read a couple things um, oh, how do we create seen no it's okay how do we create an official process um, uh, Miranda hi Miranda by the way uh, th- thanks for sticking around um, there was a process oh, in place hi, that, that had been followed for years the process needed to be modified right so, so this is kind of the hard part this is where this um, the separation of RLU and PCRL uh, comes into play. There was a question is, how do we bring, somebody asked before this, how do we bring, I won't say who, how do we bring the RLU into uh, the USARL? I don't think this really helped the situation. I'm not going to lie on that one. Uh, just keep my, uh, keep I, my mouth I, shut on that one. I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't speak on that. That's uh, not for me to decide. Yeah. We just, we play rugby league where we can. That's all right. we can do. There you go. But, but I think, and, and Lance, I'll, I'll ask you about this um, because I think this is important for us as well. Uh, all of Utah's games are online and good quality stream, actually. Like, probably the bet besides um, Jacksonville setup and sometimes Tampa's setup. I know they had some audio issues and some other issues. Um, but besides those, like PCRL, Utah Rugby League, they, like, they've got a camera up high, turning left, right, zooming. You got to go back and watch. Like, I watched every game that was out there even the terrible ones from like delaware brooklyn where it's like uh, your iphone <laughs> like on this uh, like like flat level um you know some shirtless guy probably recording it or something like that <laughs> uh you know we, we've heard whispers and rumors about confidence certain- man I wasn't going to say it was you, uh, <laughs> but you know, so, so that's that's the thing, right? Um, and, and people say we need to play at East Coast, West Coast, um, All Star, Origin. Man, it's expensive. Like flights out to the West Coast from the East Coast, it's not cheap, guys. Like if it's if it's done, everybody's got to go to the middle. You got to go to Chicago. Yeah, you got to go to Dallas to play. Yeah, like we can't Central we can't locations. do fly, fly back and forth. And here's the thing: we don't have the money. So Lance, here to ask you. If you have the opportunity, are you going to, like, say you're the head... I'm going to say, Lance Cavanaugh, you are the new USA Hawks head coach. How many games are you watching? That you, if I was... Well, as, as a Hawks coach? You're the, no, coach, you're, you're the head coach, as bro. As a coach? You, congratulations. This, this as, is, of not, as of not, 9.37 on October 11th, you are officially the new uh, Hawks, Hawks head this, coach. This isn't, a, this isn't a knock to anybody who... Uh, who is a coach? No, no, right. It's just it would literally have to watch 
80 percent of the games in At order to have because of the number of games that we have. We don't you was like if this have like, a lot. It's, it's not, yeah, but it's not, it's it, not that many. It's, it's, not, it's eight, not that eight many. Each comp, eight it's not that many. Yeah. It's not that many. It's Home, probably it's probably forty five. Yeah. Something like that. Like not even not even a whole lot. You gotta yeah. watch at least eighty percent of them. Yeah. But and, and the quality of the stream matters. So watching all the Utah games, if the stream is good, okay. I understand you gotta watch those if you can. But the, the binocular games, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can, you, you can look at the stat line for that one. Like that is a dub. But yeah, you gotta watch the majority of them. But Man. but the selection is the selection have to do with the watching of the games. Cause the players that they pick. Is that the best available that we have just because we didn't pick from the West Coast? Here's, here's the other thing I'm going to throw out there. The head coach of the Hawks, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to come back to some other questions that have scrolled upon here. I think um, that this, the head coach of the Hawks is also the head coach of Jacksonville who lost in the national championship to the dead Pelicans and still didn't select a single person from that team. That's I'll, why. I'll pause as I sip my bourbon. That is wild. That is wild. Ryan Burroughs? Uh, again, I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one. Um, yeah. but like, you know, to, to be fair to like, I guess to, to kind of defend retro to some extent, uh, that's fine. It's, did he see enough in that game to, to want to select anybody, right? Like, did he think that that player was capable of playing at the next level? Maybe not. Maybe they were just a good USARL team, right? Like, because a lot of guys Fair. don't know this. Uh, last year, uh, when we lost to Canada, um, I didn't even know if I was going to be allowed to play in that yeah. game. And it was majority uh, a USARL South Hawks team, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of guys from the and there were guys on there that were incredible athletes, but when I tell you they didn't, they didn't fucking like some of them didn't even know how to play the ball, right? Like, and they think, oh, I'm a fucking, I'm a just, I'm a dog, this dude, like, oh, like look at this motherfucker, he sucks. Like, it was a different level. I watched so many people talk shit, and he then was saying shit went, earlier. Now he's dropping f bombs. Yeah, on you, the show. you guys made it okay. So you open the floodgates. You're welcome. Um, Right, but like these these guys thought it was just going to be like a walk in the park, and they were going to do what they did at the U.S. Aerial level to the Canada national team. And when they got smacked in the mouth, they didn't know how to react because right. you're you're playing against a higher level competition. And that's what I think a lot of guys need to realize is that you can be a good U.S. Aerial player, and that's okay. Like that's fine. Uh, I I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to do whatever they want to do. Like go if you want to make the Hawks like. Do that, strive for it, do your best you can, right? I know guys that are more than capable of playing for the Hawks who've never gotten a, ch- uh, a chance or an opportunity. Yeah. Plenty of times, right? Um, but, but I can't uh, – uh, I'm trying. So eventually, uh, hopefully Miranda you know, helps me out. Uh, but, <laughs> I, you know, I'm actually going to come to her comments too because <laughs> I, I may bring Miranda on here because yeah. I, so, I don't know how so, much she can actually tell us being <laughs> a member of the board. So that's yeah, she may so, she may not be privy to share that information yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, maybe so we can my, coax maybe we can coax it out of her. Miranda, my, let me know, uh, let me know if you want to come on and chat a little bit too. Miranda's yeah. awesome, but yeah, my my. In the next like year or two, um, I plan on retiring. I plan on stopping playing. Um, uh, I have a four month old Coach. son. Uh, so yeah, so I, I plan to. I'm trying to get. I'm, I've been speaking to Retro, and so I'm trying to get on the USA uh, Hawks coaching staff to where maybe I can do a little bit of what I've done with the Cavalry uh, in the recruiting process. Right? Like I feel like I'm a very good judge of talent. Um, I, br- I bring a lot of good guys in. And I don't judge them based off of one thing they're good at or one thing they're not good at or whatever. I just look at them as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, I think I, I, I've seen some of the comments. Um, some of the guys, uh, like, they need that. Uh, I don't really know how to word it. Um, well, I, I think you need the guidance, right? And I think you and I have chatted uh, a bazillion times um yeah. and, and you know we've we've talked a lot about it i think the important thing um for you and what you've done 
is you, you're guiding people. You have that experience, like right. So you went down to Australia and played. You've been in. Oh yeah, like, just play, the like, Copperheads. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, is that Curtis down there? Probably Curtis. Curtis. Sure. Probably, Curtis. Probably Curtis. Um, probably Curtis on but there. yeah, dude, dude uh, like go, the, going to Australia or England um, gives you the to, to better your experience. game. Yeah. So I'm one of two people. Uh, for those people who don't know this, I'm one of two people who are American who actually played professional rugby league. Uh, me and Joe Eichner. Two. Just two. Um, two. So, and Joe will tell you, um, like, the professional level of rugby league is way, way harder than anything you'll probably ever do in your life. <laughs> When I tell you preseason at the Toronto Wolfpack, like both years, like it was the worst, <laughs> worst shit I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> like it was, it was awful. It was so like I was like, man, like, and I was in shape then. Like now I'm fat, so uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it ain't happening. You got, you got to. Yeah. The dad, dad bod, right? <laughs> I'm not there because I can. I have like a couple abs left. Whatever. So like, Shut. Full, full, anyway, let's move on to the dad. next thing. He's <laughs> got <laughs> a couple. Yeah, I, I mean, okay. So obviously, th- there's controversy, right? And and, and we'll. And I don't want to take up all of your time too. But there's also some great things that that you have done. Uh, sorry, I saw a name on there, uh, Roderick Waters. I haven't seen in a long time since the days of Austin Rugby. So. My man, uh, that's a man who should be playing rugby league. Robert, Absolutely, leave, Absolutely. leave the fifteen and get to thirteen, my man. Uh, if y'all don't know who Roderick Waters is, go go look him up. Go look him up. That's that's what I'm just saying right now. You have, you have a, nightmares. He is a freight train. He's a freight you train. Have nightmares. Uh, that's that's my dude. Um, you know, so Ryan, I I think. There's a, there's still a lot to happen. We still don't know. Um, I, I do want to chat with Miranda. She's still around. Uh, sorry, this is you know live shows. You never know what you're going to get. So, um, but I think it is important um, to hear from somebody like yourself that you know that has the experience, that has the knowledge. Um, I think I also think that Dylan continues to like want to let himself in right now. <laughs> um, but you know, from my standpoint, yeah, you know, I, I think you're right. Like I think there's. Uh, you know, there's more to come, but I think that you're doing the right things in DCE. Um, you, you've built a great squad yeah. down there. You, you've, you know, you had a great season. You pulled guys from, you know, you and I chatted. You pulled guys from football, like from American football, who had never played rugby before either. Code, and that right there, like I think that's the vision that we need to have for the future because of the number of sheer athletes that play football. To have somebody like yourself go and train you know, those guys to say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Follow if, what I'm going to tell you, you. If you think about it like this, right. There's 180,000 like D one D one college football players, like trying to go to the NFL who don't get drafted. Right. <laughs> Less than a percent. If we <laughs> somewhat tap into a little bit of that market, D two, D three players, whatever, like, and, and grow. Cause, cause rugby league is definitely, uh, more geared for football players. Yeah. Um, as well as uh, I recruited a lot of uh, ex wrestlers as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Up tackling baby. Yeah. So if you have a lot of guys who like to run the ball straight and like to tackle, I, I me, me personally, I, I mean, so I'll be selfish in saying this, but uh, I more recruited a lot of defensive guys. So I could score all the tries, uh, but you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what an evil plan! What an evil plan! Yeah. Brian Burrow but, uh, was doing uh, everything he can not to be not touched. To be, not to be tackled. <laughs> I'm too fragile for that now. Soft. But but what I I just it was just a simple like um, Ethan Farrick. Uh, okay. Ethan Farrick was an absolute stud for us this year. Um, wrestler, football player, played at Bridgewater. Wasn't even D one, D three school. Um, just an absolute like just weapon. Like he just. I think he missed one tackle all year. Like, he's just unreal. Um, Skylar Brownlow is another guy uh, who just, like, he, he was a – he played a tight end and defensive end at UVA Wise. Okay. Um, so, uh, he played with Carlos Federano in high school, uh, played football with him there. But I actually – yeah, I actually ghosted Skyler when he originally wanted to come out, and uh, 
he, he never lets me forget about it, which is kind of funny. But but he was actually in the uh, – both of those guys were in the 25-man selection for the Hawks, right? So yeah. for the 25-man guys, the D.C. Cavalry had five guys in it. So I started this club to try and get guys on the USA national team. That was my goal. So I want I want guys to have the opportunity to go and, and play for the country and go visit other places and – and it's really just living the dream. Like, it's just, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done. The sport changed my life for the better. And, um, so I, you know, I met my wife, I had my beautiful son. Like, it's just, it's, it's an incredible thing. So you have no idea where the game will take you. And that's, that's all I'm trying to do for my players. Really. I think right there, uh, Lance, that's a, that's a good place to, to let Mr. Burroughs enjoy the rest of his third pint of the night. Um, oh, this is like, <laughs> or, yeah, we'll keep it. <laughs> um, man, uh, it, it, Lance, you got any final questions? Uh, there was a message by the Copperheads too by the NRL Combine as a publicity stunt. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that later too. <laughs> um, just, just, uh, Ryan, we appreciate it, man. I like I actually like seeing DC live and like seeing them boys play. You know, it's clear why these dudes are champions. Congratulations on that. Uh, maybe, hopefully, hopefully next time soon we can have that championship lead to another one, so you can really get you know what I mean, and uh, you guys can be able to test yourself until you you know until you meet a team that can that can vanquish you in a way. I want to see y'all keep progressing and playing and playing. So yeah, but congratulations, man. brother. I appreciate it, man. Yep. It was good to see you at uh, in Brooklyn as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, a you know, little quiet little trip. Nothing. I, mean, you know, I give, was like, giving oh. bad intel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, Doing what I can. Nah. I was good. I love rugby league, and I just I want to. I want all you know. I want bygones to be bygones, right? There's no any any team will talk and say, "Oh, we'll beat them. We'll beat them. We'll beat them. We'll beat this." Right? It's not going to happen until it happens, right? Like, uh, but like so, like DC calling out the Pelicans. Hey, one hundred percent. I would love to play the Pelicans, uh, but it's we, a we, logistical. Nightmare, like oh my god, you gotta. Yeah, it's it's there, like to fly there and then to do all that good stuff. Like, um, it's it's just a it's a it's literally a logistical nightmare. Yeah. So, and uh, it's no fault to the Pelicans at all. Um, no. like I actually like I think they have a good team. I think they have like yeah, they're they're doing everything right. So yeah, uh, um, sure. but yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Hopefully, in the next you know. I, I, I want to say it's going to be a year or two, but I don't know. Man. Ooh, like maybe, yeah, I can't. Well, uh, I can't predict it. <laughs> right. Well, we'll 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 see what happens. I invited. I got. I brought Dylan on because I see if he had a question for you or a comment, and then his phone crapped out, <laughs> which is which is why we that's, don't ever let Dylan come on when he's on. Bit. Just just that's, <laughs> his bit. That is his bit. We we'll, we'll accept him. we'll accept it on one more time to see if Dylan's got a question. Um, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll bring, we'll bring Rand on. Nice. That's his bit, bro. <laughs> Jeez, <a whiz. laughs> For those of you Yo, listening, uh, on the, on the podcast, um, Dylan just got like a blank screen on my screen, on my. Ooh, shout out to, Di- no, it's just us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 so I, I, I can see where he fell apart. So, hey. Uh, uh, Ryan, uh, uh, real deal rugby, Mr. Dylan Farachi is just gonna not be on this part of it. So, <laughs> hey, uh, but seriously, Ryan, um, congratulations on the RLU season. Congratulations on, on the five guys that, uh, well, the four guys and yourself who were nominated for that, um, to be on the USA Hawks. I, I do, and I, I hold, hold true to the statement that it is my comments, my, um, my approach on saying that you guys should that that you know Wesco should have been added and everybody that was selected deserves to be selected. I watched games. I saw how hard the players worked. I know the guys like Genesis and and Carlos that they busted. Like I watched the games. Yeah. Great over some people. Like they play hard. Like they, I'd yeah. love to have them on there. And so <laughs> it's there's nothing Dylan, against them. Dylan, comment. Dylan can't. Then you don't come on right now. I'm. You get like you're in timeout, man. You know, penalty box until you get into some good Wi-Fi. Um, but they they deserve everything that they all the accolades that they were given. 
and and playing on the team. And it's unfortunate the whole situation. And like you said, maybe five guys get selected from the West Coast and the shit show doesn't happen. Yeah. Then we just go, okay, cool, five guys. Let's see how they play. And then we assess it after we play Jamaica. Right. Yeah. Then we go back. I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll say I'll say so, one let word. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but I'll, I'll say I'll say this. Uh, I even said um, makes, like right, I, such a stud. I, I text <laughs> I texted uh, I texted Retro and I said, uh, why don't you just select half like for this this game? This it's going to be postponed. There's no way it's happening November fourth. No. Um, but why don't you select half? a West Coast, uh, like, out of the 20 or 17 or whatever, half West Coast guys, half USARL self guys, and see how they do. Like, I, I, I mean, right? if, if the RL, you guys got to sit out, we got to sit out. But, like, don't, like, you, these guys don't know what they're getting themselves into until you play international regularly. Absolutely. Like, it, it is, it's totally different. So Absolutely. some guys got it. Some guys don't. And like I said, like the last time we played Canada, some guys thought they had it. And when it was time to show up, they fucking suck. So <laughs> no that's, why, that's why we got our ass beat. Like yep. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Like we got our ass beat. We had a very inexperienced team and Canada beat the brakes off of us. It's just, it is what it is, right? Like shit happens. You learn some, you learn some, but like they got, they got to sort it out. And yeah. I, I hope it happens sooner rather than later because I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My clock, clock is ticking. Clock's ticking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, well, hey, uh, th- those last two things on there promote Ryan Burroughs to the U.S. Aerial Scouting Director and what makes Ryan <laughs> such a stud. Uh, those questions will be answered on a later episode of <laughs> Rugby League in America. You'll never, never, know, you'll know. never, you'll never know. know. You'll never know. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Burroughs, uh, he, uh, leader of the yeah. DC yeah. Cavalry um, and yeah. RLU champions um, for 2023. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks for coming on. Always great to see you. Yeah, appreciate you guys for having me. You guys take care, all right? Yep. Take it easy, man. You, you, you see how cool he was? Wait, wait do, you, do, you guys, do, you, do you guys kick me off here? I don't know how to leave. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Burroughs is not going to join the rest of the podcast. I don't know how to work the internet. You guys got to kick me out of the thing, don't you? Oh, yeah. hit the, oh my God. Hit the, um, oh, hit the oh, name geez. at the top. Hit How your you name at the, the top. Name at the top with the little arrow. Hit your name. Oh, leave. leave. Okay. All right, guys. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Letting old people uh, <laughs> work on... You see at the end how he just got to slip in his beer yeah. all cool. Like that's sorry. a good way to end it. Yeah, like, sorry. I'll just end the Lone Ranger. Right he had to <laughs> hey, shout uh, out to him, man. I had to play against him once. That is not it wasn't I wasn't too happy. Man, that dude's quicker than a hiccup. Yeah, but he decided to run right at me. I was so ashamed. <laughs> he ran well, right I, at, I, at me. How'd that work out for you? Uh he bounced me a little bit. Got an extra like three meters afterwards. Yep. And I dragged him down. Like he bumped me off. We still was on our feet, and it was a wrestling match. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Lance, that's um. L- listen, somebody asked me the other day, "Do I feel bad about posting that list and creating the controversy?" Lance, Lance, would you have done it? No. And I'll give you my answer. No. No. But, 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 but just the reason. But you're a nice guy. <laughs> well, that's part of it. Maybe. But it's it's people on that list that I couldn't I couldn't speak to it and spoil, even though that's not your intention. Your intention is integrity, right? Yeah. Your intention is is pretty honest and straightforward. But like Kyle Granby, for example, right? Like this is a guy I've known for a million I, years. Yeah, it's been it's been a decade. I think I first met him like for you know 2014 or something. <laughs> so it's about to be a decade. And that's like somebody I respect. So I wouldn't say anything negative to such a great accomplishment as to making a USA team. Yeah. But on the other hand, <laughs> but here's the other thing, right? You didn't do, you didn't do nothing wrong. Right. No, I mean, those guys, did, the players didn't do nothing wrong. Uh, the other issue is that uh, Boston, Brooklyn, and DC all announced on social media that they got selected. So that was the other issue that, Kind of raised some questions on there too. Now that was mm-hmm. throw that one out there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Nice guys finished last. Uh, Burrow says that KG is a weapon. A weapon. KG. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, let's let Dylan try to get back on here with this. That's his, it's his bit now. He does, he do it on, does he do it on your show? No. Well, on my show, he be chilling. That's my guy. But he's in the car. Hey, look at he's this a, is his bit. It's dark. Oh, my God. And, and he left. And oh, he left. My, oh my God. God. This is his bit. I called it from the beginning. God. This is, Whoever runs the foxes. Is, is, oh okay. My God. Um, Miranda, if you're on, send, send me a send me a message again, and, and we'll get you back on. Until um, we will have Miranda come back on. I do want to talk quickly. Um, I'm going to go back. Uh, yeah, we've been maybe we've been rocking for like 45 minutes. This is going to be a long episode. Uh, we'll break it up on two parts in the podcast. Part one, part two. That'll be fun. Um, Toronto Wolf Pack. We talked about about it earlier. Um, the last game of their season has been canceled against the Jacksonville Axemen. Um, flights got, uh, according to some people, the flights went up like to $1,500 a ticket. Well, that's what happens when you like book last minute. Uh, Toronto Wolfpack has paid for every single person. Uh, that's an air 80 whiskey glass. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll come like that. Um, has paid for every single team to come up, both flights and staying in Toronto. That is a lot of money. And they feel as though they could have used it somewhere else. Um, they're undefeated. You said ahead. they paid for everybody to come up? Every single team that went up and played the Toronto Wolfpack, the Toronto Wolfpack organization, not only paid for their flights, but they played for their hotel accommodations. You do the math on that. We, t- we talked about it on our previous episode. I, th- I thought we did. Um, I talked about it with somebody. It's a shit ton of money. Um, and not... Uh, I- I've heard... Uh, reports and I know there's some people in here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just saw a comment that made me laugh a whole lot. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, uh, I'll say that comment in a minute, Mr. Ryan Burroughs. Um, but that you know, basically, they paid for everybody to come up and play. Um, you know, uh, they they beat everybody. Their average winning margin was 46 and a half points. They only defeated Brooklyn by four, though. But Brooklyn had, I think Peter Lupton from the Boston went up and played. Listen, here's, here's the issue with, uh, with what I have with Toronto Wolfpack, uh, version 3.2.1 or whatever they are now. Uh, <laughs> um, Toronto Wolfpack, uh, it's, the, it's the Canadian national team. Like, more or less, it is the Canadian national team. So you're the Canadian national team. You're playing Boston, who finished... Um, in, in the regular season, they finished third. Overall, they finished fourth, uh, last in the RLU. They played Atlanta Rhinos, who finished third. They were supposed to play Copperheads twice. Unfortunately, uh, both of those times got canceled. Um, it, it, yeah, it's <sighs> there's all kinds of things that I keep. They they played the club teams. They didn't play a representative side. I'm going to play. Yeah, you know, go play the RLU All Stars. Go play the USA Aero South All Stars. Um, cycling rugby league fan uh, just commented and said it's the Wolverines in everything but name. Absolutely, it's a hundred percent. The inf- and Lance, have you watched anything? Any of the games that have been up there? In- not, not the Toronto game. Yeah. No. no, I mean it's honestly, I, I I I'm not forking over you know five bucks to watch a stream of amateur rugby get murdered by the national team. The Vancouver, <laughs> Vancouver Dragons. Hello friends out in Vancouver. I think more BC guys would make the Canada team than are currently on the Wolfpack. Ooh, I would love to see a representative RLBC side go up against the Wolfpack. Uh, that would be fun. Um, and Ryan Burroughs uh, earlier said that uh, all that money could have gone to the NARL. <laughs> the, the, the ill-fated NARL. Um, DC would beat Toronto. Ryan Burroughs laying down the gauntlet. I, I kind of think it would happen. Um, listen, it's it's a crap ton of money. Toronto Wolfpack. It, it's for me. I, I've seen the the images from the games. You know, they've got the fans going, but it's sad state. I don't know how they're making any money at all. Um, I think the I think uh, if you get a true representative side, you at least give a little bit of competition. Yeah. Um, it, it's just yeah. it's sad. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, honestly, I don't care. Um, I would have loved 
loved the Brooklyn versus Toronto game. Many of us West Coast mercenaries participated. West Coast mercenaries? That needs to be the representative side name from the West Coast. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So. yeah. Lance, what, what's your take on... I want to know your take on the whole Toronto Wolfpack period. Like, what do you think right now? Uh, I can't hear you. Um, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Now. Oh, bad, there you bad. go. It was somebody talking about the prices of the game. Oh, bad. I can't remember who I was talking to that was talking about the prices it's, of the game. Started off at $32 a ticket. <laughs> yes, it's it. It's Shit. Over. It's over. Man. It's in a, over. NRL. It's, like, in a, NRL for two matches, nineteen fifty. dollars Now, Ticketmaster ticket master will charge you $74 for those two tickets. <laughs> it, it's over there. Like, that's one part of it. Hearing about them, um, one thing about hearing about them paying for flights and hotels, it just makes me sad that I retired so early. I retired. <laughs> I had a trip to the six, and I didn't even know it. I had one ready. Oh, nah, man. but yeah, that's funny. Um, th- this the whole saga of the Wolf Pack is just is just like a revolving, ever flowing, ever going like hopes and dreams, hopes and dreams, hopes and dreams. Like it just. I, I can't. I can't put my my finger on it. Really, like, yeah. who they can't play anybody great because it's not like a great foundation of teams around them. Canada is just. It seems like Canada's just bustling to blow up the rugby league, but they don't have enough support around the. Nah, America. Yeah, I mean, and, and America need to be need to be better at it. It's just it's just a sad story for me. Yeah. Um, I I didn't see. I haven't seen if um. If Miranda is still on, so sorry, Miranda. I haven't seen. I saw one from like a little while ago, but I didn't see Miranda's on. on. Is she on? Okay. Mar- yeah. Let me, let me see. Where are you at? I want to invite her on because I want to talk about our next thing too. She was there. Uh, Thirty-two dollars a ticket to watch your favorite T-Mobile worker play rugby. Cycling <laughs> <laughs> uh, rugby league fit says somebody asked me how they would foster a team side from the UK. A League One side would have wiped the floor with the Toronto Wolf Pack. Somebody said thirty-two dollars. What the front door? Uh, yeah, so that's um, that's another thing. Um, Miranda, I sent you an invitation. See if you got that. By the way, I'll send it again. There we go. Uh, um, nose is looking healed. Uh, yeah, and it's it's about as good as it can be when you drop thirty kilos of weight on your face. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you get a little bit up here, a little cut up here, a little stuff here. So, I was never the pretty one. I'm always the uh, face for radio, which is why we don't do live video. <laughs> um, okay, so well, it, it, hopefully Miranda can come on. Maybe she'll come on here in a little bit. Um, let's move on to the next topic, Lance. Which uh, I'll give you the choice. You've got the rundown. The next yep. one, next one in line, or skip to the big one. I'm still cute though. Thanks, bro. Skip. Skip it. Okay, we'll come back because I we'll, we'll talk to Miranda because she was she'll have input on the other. If, if Miranda's so. ready in here, I'm going to talk to Miranda. But if not, scan. I got I got nothing. I've sent her an invite to come join. So Miranda, if you want to join us, we'd love to have you on. N R L Las Vegas, Viva Las Vegas. Uh, don't see an invite. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, invite yourself on. Ask to join. Request. We can do that. So we'll, we'll pause on NRL Vegas and there we go. Pause on NRL Vegas. We'll come back to that because lots to talk about. Yes. Uh, see the team to Vegas. Keep accepting the invite. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Is your mic on, by the way? I just have to ask before you. Test, test, test out Got my it. mic. It's right on. <laughs> fourth meeting of the day, so I'm glad that conference. Uh, I'm glad that the you fourth can still hear me. Day? Oh. All USA well base. Things are getting better over here. It just takes yep. a good bit of work. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we're 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 working on things here. Uh, right, I think this is actually the first time you and I've actually chatted on in any like audio form. So that's I know messages and stuff. But uh, thanks for joining yeah, us. Uh, you're lucky. For I those just, of you that good you're in a good mood right now. <laughs> Maybe we can put you in a bad one and we'll ask some controversial stuff and go from there. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. Um, so so there's, there's two things that are really... Uh, one, we haven't even talked about, uh, but this first one we actually did, and you had some insight too, 
was the selection process, uh, the controversy, as we like to call it, uh, about the national team selection. Uh, you are a board member. We do appreciate you uh, for the USARL. So for those of you that are all you board, no, USARL board member. Um, actually, a newly appointed, uh, if I'm not like just a couple months in, right? Yeah. Uh, about a half a year, yes. Uh, joined the women's committee about a year ago. Um, and so I'm about a half year in on the NGB side. Fantastic. Um, okay, so we talked with Ryan. Um, everybody saw the post that I put out there and pissed people off. Um, sorry, that's just, I'm good at that. You're the media, isn't that your job? Oh, <laughs> man, I don't get into that. I'm also, I'm also the, I'm also trying to do my best to support and promote the game as much as possible because I think we can be better. I think you said it in one of the texts we can be, the more we show transparency, the better off we are. I pinned it on there because I wholeheartedly agree. Um, what can you tell us? about the selection process as it stands now. We talked with Ryan. We know that the guys have been deselected. Um, what is the selection process with the U.S. men's national team? If you're not allowed to say, that's okay. And we'll move on to other things. That I and we'll, and we'll move put on. on. We'll move on. As I sip my, my, my aerated bourbon, yes, Eli, this I do live fancy. Yes, Eli. You're just rubbing it in. I, I have not. yet to have had my nightcap. Listen, it's so. 10 o'clock <laughs> at night where I'm at right now. And yes, I, this is a barrel selection. Of same. Some fry rings. Same. same. It's 10 o'clock at night. And you're just making me jealous. Um, but back to the question. Yeah, I think uh, where we're at right now. And, you know, I'm not. I, I heard some comments about how, you know, this coach should have been representative. I think so-and-so should have been on the team, you know. But at the end of the day, I want to stay in my lane and my lane is not a selector of a team where I'm looking, you know, I am a selector of a team. I help select the whole women's committee. Right. And that team of women have rocked it. So looking at that and thinking about the job that has to be done on the pitch, because I'm an athlete as well, I would hate to be the person that has to know out of 500 athletes who all together is going to do the best job. But I can tell you if I'm not qualified to make that selection, but what I am qualified to do is see where, you know, there are some opportunities to expand or enhance processes. That's what I'm kind of brilliant at. And, you know, when I see inefficiencies, I can jump in and offer assistance there to say, hey, this is a broken process. This is how I recommend we go about fixing it and getting people like Ryan engaged. Hey, Ryan, you offer a lot to this broken process where, you know, identifying those resources because it can't all be on one person or one panel. And that panel has got to be comprised and keep up with the momentum and the growth that we are seeing right now in the states with rugby league. You know, we have been operating at one pace with kind of these cluster of just teams. We had a north and a south competition where the coach could go and see those folks. And I think Lance alluded to it earlier. You know, you can't in 80 minutes like truly that that might be an off game for an athlete. You know, you got to take that whole season into account. So I think the adjustments that have been made to the process, everybody's going to be stoked about, and it's going to fully encompass and take into consideration all of the regions that have gone underneath the national governing body. And, you know, ultimately that gets the governing body to the goal of having that voice and that seat at the IRL table. And I mean, until we want to make an impact, we have to be, we have to be in that room. And uh, in order to do that, we have to continue to growing and we have to keep up with the growth. And I think what you saw was just, um, one of those classic classic things that you see in corporations where you're moving so fast you you can't keep up with with the changes and um you know the more people that continue to get involved uh the faster those boxes can get ticked on on all the all the processes that need to be enhanced you know so um i'm just i'm grateful you know that we've got recognition from the media's perspective, we've got promotion, you know, happening, be it good, be it bad. We're being talked about at the end of the day and everything else can be sorted by offering more avenues to transparency into the USARL. And, you know, whether that's a website upgrade with hot links that take you to places where you as the public can learn more, lots of things are happening and changing. And right now, I'm sure, you know, we're in the middle of a reform. So when we come out of that, um, my hope and my personal goal is to have it be better than it was. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not 
Um, I don't have a magic wand. I don't think any of us do. And we can't just wiggle it no. and make things happen overnight. We don't have those. You know, we have to be patient and we have to all offer our talents for the, the betterment and, and the good here. So that's really Look what I'm talking about. Constructive. <laughs> Look at you all unity and synergy. I like it. But no, but no, son. <laughs> but no, son. What, what do you, uh, uh, I'm listening, Lance. Go ahead. <laughs> Lance, Lance is coming in hot. No, I'm just going to sit, no, gonna sit back because I'm usually the one asking the tough questions. No, so he Lance came gonna, from under the hat. I'm ready. He's out from under the hat. Bring it, Lance. It, it, it sounds like a fairy tale, right? Because it's all this. It seemed like this is a repeat of a conversation I had in 2016. You know what I mean? Like, that's more or less the thing. Like, what you do. And what has happened with the women's team to me is like, it, it warms my heart. Like somebody is trying, somebody is making it happen. But then you look at my bros <laughs> and, and, and usually this is the part that's, that's like not irony. I don't mean it like that, but usually it's the other way around. Usually it's the men's team that has the momentum and got things going. And it's the women's team that's neglected or has some controversy or something going on. So now that that is flipped and I'm seeing my lady, not, and I'm, I mean in the general world <laughs> sense, not in rugby league sense, right? It's flipped now. But now that I'm seeing my ladies go out here and play and get to represent, I'm so thankful for what y'all are doing. And, you know, so you know, I'm, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. We Lance, we wouldn't have that opportunity if the men, if we didn't get to build off the men's already success. Like if it hadn't been established in America, you think we would have had such opportunities to go on? Most of our domestic growth has been because the men's team has added a women's team along with them. So, I mean, we are not denying the fact, like I am loving the fact that, you know, we are leaning on each other's strengths right now. Um, the men have the success of longevity and the women are kind of, I wasn't around in 2016 so i'll say that's the only difference between and then and now if you've heard the conversation before you didn't hear it from me you know and so i think as the hawks become this unified front not only will the women's impact um further promote the momentum of the women's game but it'll also help promote the men's wheelchair and the youth as we continue to grow as one and you know that one umbrella links us together where the organization and the transparency and the you know the resources are all putting their heads together and it's not just reliant upon you know handshakes and conversations I, I believe my mind was a bit blown when I came into this organization and so many things were undocumented or there weren't policies and procedures that went along with all these things. Oh, Miranda, you didn't follow a protocol. Okay, well, show me that protocol. You know, point to it. Because at the end of the day, it, it was exist. a conversation somebody had, you know, two years ago or, or whatever the case may be. It's just an example where, you know, things in the past, um, like everything in the past, we learn from it and we grow and then we come together and we continue to build and that's exactly where we're at. We're not switching places from a men and women's perspective. I definitely get what you're saying, Lance. The women are on the rise in the world in general, which <laughs> I love, but um, I, I think it's just, uh, it's been that way and now it's spreading to women in sports and that's across all sports. So um, I'm very excited. I've been an athlete my entire life in different sports, but I'm just the, the momentum in which women uh, are getting recognition and and continue to is is just it's, it's exciting for us. Okay. So let, let me let me ask you this, Miranda. Now now oh, here comes the tough hard question. question. The voice the voice change. Ready? <laughs> cute cute question. <laughs> yeah, I know my my lighthearted. Uh, no, it's I, I think it's it's a no. I say vast. So first of all, one I will say, uh, Addie, Ben, yourself, uh, everybody that's been involved in the women's game and the growth down there, fantastic. As Ben joins us, Mr. Calvary. Uh, hey, Ben. Hello, Welcome. Benjamin. <laughs> it must be after dinner time out on the West Coast. Um, but, you know, obviously, great stuff has happened. Uh, America, America's Championship just uh, just started happening. I think that that's... Uh, I, wanna, I do want to talk about that, actually. That's fine. Oh, I'd love right to now. tell you all about Cause, that. Because <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. Um, but in the selection process of that team back on, so, so here is on that i, I am i i i i, okay. I, I am because okay. i because people listen because so so many people reach out to me yeah and they and they said okay so if if these guys aren't selected why do why does the rlu get selected and then the people say okay well they're not so rlu is not selected because they haven't played a sanctioned they're not sanctioned right? they haven't played a sanctioned match under the usarl which is 
I guess, a part of the gov- the new governance of everything. Uh, I have not seen that, so I don't know if that's actually true. You can confirm that in a minute. Um, the so if the RLU guys can't play because they don't play a sanctioned USARL match. There is no match to be played. The women, however, I know that people from Roots and people from Cleveland and other teams who aren't technically, who haven't played a technically a sanctioned USARL match, minus probably, I don't even know if uh, Naples Nines is a sanctioned match or not, question mark. Um, but I'm again, nothing about players that be selected because the women's team is been great and the growth is fantastic and they're, the way they played against Canada and Jamaica down in Jamaica was wonderful. Talk about that in a minute. Um, but okay, so what's the justification of not, not, not retaining the selection of the men who were selected for the USARL uh, to, met, to go down and play Jamaica but yet having the women who haven't played a, a sanctioned USARL match play in Jamaica? I don't, I don't know. Why not? Doesn't an apple taste like an orange? I mean, the men's domestic competition is in a completely different place than the women's domestic competition. Sure. You know, at the end of the day, if it were apples to apples, then we could be having that that <laughs> discussion. Lance you know, threw his hat off, by the way. I just want to point in case you missed that. <laughs> Lance, like, I don't, I don't buy that at all. My yeah, hat's coming off. Fire right now. Keep going. We want more. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, they they did meet the qualifications. They were selected by the head coaches, and they showed exactly why when you got to watch it live. And that's that's where it is. If if we had been in a situation where our domestic comp was such that we got to play, you know, games against each other and, oh, and such that, yeah, we'll and. 2024 after the reform when the process is in place the process will apply across the board in this instance we were in a different position and you know those those athletes had still registered for two events within the usarl which means they paid the the fee that i played in the uh, domestic team they paid the same thing i paid for my domestic season as they did for those two USARL events. So at the end of the day, they met the criteria. It, it wasn't a sanctioned mat, but it, it was a sanctioned event. Um, whether it be a talent ID camp or whether it be the Naples Nines or whatever it pertained to those ladies, they they met the qualifications. They followed the strength and conditioning. They were chosen by the coaches. They paid their trophy. They went. They showed out. We beat Jamaica. It was badass. What's next? Love that. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I love it here. I love it here. Throwing my headset off there. Man. I'm not going to do that. That's, this thing's expensive. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Pour myself some more bourbon. You're here. still making me jealous here. I mean, you um, one I know. Uh, no, I, listen, I, I, again, I think as the only uh, media in North America, in the in the Western Hemisphere, that's covering anything with rugby, everybody comes with questions, and we just have to ask. And that's all I'm doing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, sanctions. Yeah, I, I don't. The, what I would like to see from as you build your new website that you were talking about, I would love to see that because the current one is terrible. I alluded to ways in which we could approve. Didn't say I took that task on. Don't volunteer me to do that. Somebody, if you're raising your hand and saying you should help. Somebody. Hey, guy, yeah, hey I, slide in my DMs and still want to help. <laughs> I don't think that's what you mean by slide into my DM. <laughs> that's, that's the commercial if you haven't seen it. Um, I and, and, haven't. Anyway, okay. I'll, I'll slide into your DMs and I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, what I think is um, important when the you can pass this along to the rest of the board when the new governance gets set in stone to please put it on the website so that everybody can go and read it so that they one know about it and two stop coming to me for all the questions <laughs> yeah documents will definitely be um, made public uh, certainly yes. such that in a press release that's the official announcement of the squad before it gets leaked out anywhere else you know so there's there's definitely some some things that need to go in place to to protect uh you know what we've got and um, what we're working towards uh to make sure that you guys don't feel guilty in the future for sharing something you maybe should or shouldn't have shared <laughs> Shouldn't have what language? <laughs> I, I I say should. I know that the person who shared it has been reprimanded, and I I'm sorry. So, <laughs> but 
But you're not. You're but, media. You got well, some shot. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, I, I'm I'm sorry that I shared it to the point that it, it caused even more controversy. Uh, I would have thought it would have. It, it was going to happen either way. You know like, what I'm like, excited like, about? It didn't turn into like a nope. big massive fire or thing. No, because if we, we didn't cover it, nothing else would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When I didn't get selected for the squad, I didn't go crying to anybody. I, I was told to call the coach, and I called the coach and said, hey, why didn't I get selected for the squad? Uh-huh. Okay. Isn't that where you start, I right? I, listen, I've, I, I've, I've, reached, I've reached out to uh, said coach numerous. I've had people say, "Go talk. he wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. No one has slid into my DMs. Or at, everybody in this country has my number or has my contact information, uh, and uh, this coach, <laughs> rugby league in America, is a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of like a telenovela, which is way more intense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, the coach. Uh, sign up for that. I, I am. I am open <laughs> to chatting with Retro anytime he would like to chat. Please let him know that. As I've told did, you try out for a position. Are you an athlete? I'm, I'm confused. I'm, over 40 i don't need to be selected for so am i are you like an age and issue i'm listen that's I, ages that's, that's ageism i'm ageism myself on this one <laughs> that doesn't make it better listen nobody wants a 40 year old five eights just say yeah. nobody younger than restless <laughs> anyway okay enough of that i want to get to the Some more important you things should just keep to yourself What's that? <laughs> Some opinions you should just keep to yourself <laughs> There we go. That's, we'll, 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 work, we'll work on that and see how that continues to handle. Uh, but let's talk about more important things, age isn't an issue, says Ryan Burroughs, um, <laughs> who's on his seventh beer now. Um, um, it says okay. the guy with an unending whiskey glass. <laughs> I, got a, I got a lot left. I'm just letting you know. We, 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 can, we can go is it for a while. Six proof? I mean, what kind of shelf? Oh, are you no, no, no. This, this, is, this, is one, this is 133. I don't, I don't reach for oh. weak stuff. Lord. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, a couple, uh, the, over, the, over the course of the past couple of weeks, whilst I was on vacation and I loved watching it because it was fantastic and I did watch it from the country of Sylvania, uh, oh. America's Championship Unfortunately for us American fans, Canada, ranked number seventh in the world, did win the first ever America's Women's Championship over the U.S., who's ranked 18th, and Jamaica, who is unranked, playing their first match, which is fantastic for Jamaica. I'm so happy for those those ladies down there. It's wonderful. Game one, um, for those of you that don't know, USA defeated Jamaica 78 to 8. Uh, Marcia, is that how you say her name? Marcia Bayless, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, not. Marcia. Uh, Marcia. Oh, I, I spelled that, that wrong. I'm so Bayless. sorry. That's it's like Bayless Abadil. Bayless. I love that. Uh, four tries, Brittany day, uh, Days or Day S? <laughs> um, I don't even Ooh. know who you're trying to say. What? Brittany, <laughs> What's Brittany the first Days time? had four tries as well. Brittany Ruiz. They yeah, spelled it I don't oh, know what article oh. you yeah, uh, that article oh, that's, got a lot of the names oh, wrong. <laughs> oh yes, no wonder. I just copied the names from the uh, European rugby you league. You can always trust the media. <laughs> Nobody else. The USARL didn't post this up there. <laughs> oh, we got uh, a roster out there, though. You could have double checked it. Well, I've got nine thousand things on here, and Lance was doing other things today, like working. So uh, all right, move us up the priority list. We need I to know. be up there. Uh, okay. 78-8 game one. Canada uh, unfortunately defeated the U.S. 30-4 to in game two. Um, and then obviously Canada defeated Jamaica 58-2 to in game three. Um, congratulations to Canada for winning. Um, but obviously, uh, since you are on, we're going to talk about how great it was for the U.S. to go down to Jamaica, perform exceptionally well on the first game while they were down there. But then also, a massive difference Watching can watching Canada US now versus the last time we played night and day night and day. Uh, I thought Courtney Trico played exceptionally well. She did really well um, at, at, in the halves. Um, the, again, her interview will come out that I did before I left. That was uh, fizzled out by lost audio. Um, Miranda, tell us about what it was like to be down in Jamaica for like a week or so now. Um, yeah, and, six days. And, 
Six days. Six days in the sun of Jamaica, uh, on the beaches. No, no, you were hardworking, playing rugby league. Uh, how was that? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was an incredible experience. The hospitality we received in Jamaica was right on point with their reputation. I mean, from the greeting at the airport to um, Curtis coming directly to our hotel and introducing himself day one, Adrian doing the same. So not only the coach, but the representative we were working directly through with Romeo, they were just all very hospitable, thought it was of the utmost importance to make a personal introduction on day one, which I thought, you know, speaks worlds of, of their character and, uh, you know, what they're trying to do over there and then of course the venue absolutely stunning location you've got you're surrounded by these beautiful mountains in kingston jamaica and the valley one two three there was ability for probably four fields um but the front field it was it was just gorgeous it was stunning we had a storm roll through in the second half of the jamaica game it absolutely torrential downpour um and to see the ability of usa to still be able to move the ball through that level like if you're if you've ever played in those wet and muddy conditions you know how hard it is to get even a small pop pass off these ladies were sending it and i'm just like what is happening and it's and it was just so much cohesion between athletes who had just met for the first time and worked together some of them two days prior to that game and so big shout out to the leadership team courtney traco sam black paris paris hart um uh oh who is my other one she's gonna kill me courtney paris sam and robin robin yeah, and there, there's uh, Robert Oliveri. A team was Canada. Uh, let me see. Yeah, who who is our other um? Oh, our oh other man, that's other. terrible. That went, that's because I've been drinking bourbon, so that's my excuse. <laughs> my excuse is I'm going brain dead. I've talked so much USARL today. Um, but no, our leadership team did a great job bringing all of the ladies together in such a short amount of time frame. We did pool recovery activities after, you know, the captain's run and training sets. We started playing, you know, icebreakers card games, you know, to really bring that cohesion together. And you saw that um, in, in the Jamaica game. I think one of the lessons learned for us, we really, I mean, we had one day of recovery after playing a full 80 minute game um that one day might not have been enough you know i would just in the future i think we're going to put a little bit more padding in there just to allow our athletes more recovery period um and maybe even take a lessons learned from canada uh, they came off of a, a camp um into that america's north championship which you saw that in the cohesion between those athletes it's like they had been playing together you know for a month that that you know nonverbal communication that athletes can gain by working alongside of one one another for that length of time before getting on a grandstand like that um you just i think that was the one thing canada kind of had as well as that rest period you might have saw a little bit different of the game I, you know i saw more forward passes than i'd ever seen in an international match <laughs> i think that was that I was blowing my mind at one point like the the back and forth on the errors was just i mean usa was putting up such a good defense their trial line defense mm -hmm. against jamaica was almost impenetrable and then when they faced canada it was a it was a different i mean but they played 80 minutes of you know hard rugby the right. day practically the day before you know so i felt for our athletic trainer mary slover her and i were sharing a room and she was just working calves lower back shoulders just getting those athletes yeah. prepped for you know battle again uh, within 24 hours guns so. in the world to turn you around in 48 <laughs> hours to play there was a mary <laughs> and i mean if, if anybody wants to travel as a certified massage therapist and and sponsor it you know, you know I'm, right. I'm listening but it's, no it's, it's, I think um, we really set ourselves up for future success. I know off of that, we uh, actually had a meeting today with um, Curtis and Katie, the team managers of Jamaica and Canada, talking about future plans for 2024, 2025, 2026. Um, so exciting things to come. That was the first of many. And those ladies, um, they they were just they were they were just uh, epic all yeah. the way around. Every yeah. every player did their job and. You know, every coach, the coaches obviously made made the right selection, and you saw that. And I'm I'm excited to see where this grows from here, as we've got a lot of things planned uh, for the upcoming year. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I I think you know, again, I I said kind of as as we were kind of leading into this, like I there's a huge difference in in the team that played Canada for the first time ever, mm -hmm. right? First time ever in a national team. Um, to the team that played, you know, 
uh, oh, a, yeah. week, a week ago, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the dates. I'm like, yeah, it was like just over a week ago. Yeah. Um, and, and it it was unbelievable. Uh, Vancouver Dragons said they'd love to see the championship up here one year. I'd be kind of yeah. Of course, we want to see it here. We want to see it everywhere. Like, uh, um, yeah. I I, I, I would like <laughs> I'd love to see Brazil get a chance to come up and play. They're in our region. They're they're yeah. in our region. Yeah, so a, it only that's, makes a, that's what I'm saying. Like they're in the Americas. I know it's. I mean, it's a long flight for Brazil. It, like if you thought it it's is. a long flight for us, Brazil is a long flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is for sure. But they, they're still technically in our region and they're also hungry to play league. So yeah, I'm sure. not saying that there's not an invite going out to them in the future, but I'm, I'm excited for everything that's, that's in store and what's to come. And the team that's working alongside of me is certainly going to get us there. Yeah. And, and I think it, it's great. I'm glad the stream was up. I, I did. It was, uh, it was late at night for me. I think it was like, well, 30 at night when I was watching it and <laughs> over in Europe. Uh, but I wanted to watch the match because I do, I, as you said before, you know, when we we're talking about selections and stuff, like the growth of the women's game is so important yeah, right yeah. now and it's yeah. so great. And we're just starting to scratch the surface of getting to see everybody involved in women's rugby league. It'd be great to get a, a even a three team competition out west and even a, a three team competition on the east coast and the south. Like, how do we build that up? And I think the things that, that are being set in motion by yourself, by Addy, by Ben, by everybody who's been involved in the growth of the women's game is absolutely 100% commendable. And thank you. Um, we are totally appreciative of, of that. And I, I can't wait to see what happens and hopefully that we can get a qualification for a world cup and to see the U S women run out on a world. I know fingers crossed. We keep them crossed. We get, we're going to, we we'll just got to keep checking the boxes. We just got to keep checking the boxes uh, one we, box at a time. We got a lot of boxes <laughs> to check is, uh, for the... Not too many more. Not, not we too don't many. have too many more. There's some important the ones. ones. Are <laughs> There's so some important ones for eligibility. <laughs> you are so media trained. Your answers are so... I know. So crisp. Right? So, no, I, no, but I, I, do have, I do have a question. That's, I was coming to you, so I'm goal? glad. What is the ultimate goal for you inside of this entire... Uh, USA Women's Rugby League National Team outfit. Where is your in the future? Five years from now, three years from now, where do you see yourself? In the national team outfit? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to make a stronger impact with uh, the youth. Um, I, I want to get the women, obviously, to continue and the momentum to continue. But I think in order, I speaking on behalf of me, think in order for. Um, you know, the states to really be a competition to these other countries, we have to start at the same age these other countries do. You know, we have to start our kids at five, six years old, you know, seven, eight years old. And until we have a, a stronger focus on the youth, we're going to continue to take athletes that are training in different codes and, and try to bring them up to speed. But it, it needs to be from the ground up and it needs to be. Uh, so from a national perspective, I'd, I'd like to see this not only include the women, but also uh, be pretty inclusive of, of the youth and, and grass, grassroots so we can actually um, build these athletes from a young age. You know, I didn't find it until 35. I wish I'd have found it sooner. <laughs> that's, that's still young, right? That's, I'm gonna keep telling myself that 35 is. <laughs> yeah, Lance ain't saying anything since he's. Yeah, I'm uh, around. I'm by, I'm by, I, I I'm see by my, myself giving more of my time towards helping grow the youth alongside of Janet Keene and and some of the folks up north. And I'd love to talk to George up in Utah and and um, get the youth going. But definitely not ready to break away from my women yet. Well, yeah. You, you, I thought you, I was going to a hard question, Lance. No, nah, I'm a nice guy. No, Lance, Lance, Lance is the nice guy. Remember, good cop, bad cop. That's how we work out here. Like, I, I'm the <laughs> bad cop. For, I'm the bad cop as well, for the most part. So, um, but yeah, I think that obviously youth is important. And I think that's, that's one of those big boxes that we got to start checking off for that, uh, that next, uh, that next level for those IRL folks. Um, that's, uh, another topic of conversation that I don't think we're going to get to tonight, Lance, but that's okay. Um, well, uh, Miranda, you don't have a drink in your hand. You have been so great to be on and chat <laughs> when you had no idea that we were going to have you on. No, so I really appreciate it. Uh, well, face, but I did get my D's nuts on. <laughs> I, I, I saw, I saw that. I saw that. It, these Lance, did you D's nuts. see that? These nuts. 
No, I didn't. I didn't see these nuts. I didn't. I did not. Do you need <laughs> another one? Send me your address. I'll let you taste them. You want the disappointment? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can send you some dill or banana banana pudding flavored. You want some sriracha ranch wow. or ghost cheddar? Wow, yo, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Man, I didn't even. <laughs> oh. They're okay. tasty. Well, well, I didn't do nothing. Well, I'm well, this is done. this has gotten. They're the probably sponsor for the USA women's team, I, I, so I, I, they I, did the you, front did of our did you, put, did you put that on when I said you should you should come on? Or did you have it on to begin with? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's ten o'clock at night. I just I had to strip out of my uh, my USA RL polo. Yeah. I had done a few meetings back to back. So there you go. So, dude, that's that's the important thing is uh, th- that's good marketing right there. That's as, great as, marketing as, as the marketing guy. Good marketing. <laughs> Way to go, uh, Miranda! Th- uh, thanks so much. For- <laughs> at grabthesenuts dot com when you post this later at grabthesenuts at, at grabthesenuts dot com. Uh, what, what the 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 uh, the unofficial official the official unofficial sponsor of tonight's podcast uh, and live show is. <laughs> My dog just yelled at that too. Like, ah, yeah, I grab these, these nuts. I guess. <laughs> these. Wow. Yeah, D E E apostrophe. S Lance, that's that's what that is. So, oh all right, <laughs> Miranda, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, on, guys. chatting. We look forward to. Uh, Burrow said that's offensive on his now thirteenth beer. Um, <laughs> Making me jealous, guys. I know. All right, it's time uh, for my night cap. Have, Thanks, y'all. Have a good night, Miranda. Appreciate Bye. it. Uh, I gotta, oh, I got to but- give me some. I got to give me a drink now. Yeah, everybody's enjoying themselves tonight. <laughs> Listen, I came prepared because I knew we were going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, you know, for those, for those of you that are, that are, uh, fighting through this, this is, you know, we're, we're going on like an hour and a half. I don't know if anybody's been on the entire time. I don't think anybody's been on the entire time. Um, but you know, that's all right. Uh, Burroughs has been <laughs> close. Real deal. Real deal is, he, been he's been in and out for 47 times. <laughs> uh, uh, Alan's been on the entire time. Alan. Okay. Who else is there? And Ryan. But yeah, and also Ryan, uh, Ryan's been Jason's in and out. Been uh, off, uh, yeah, Jason's percent of it. Jason's been in and out. I've, I've seen that. Uh, t- Tommy's been in and out, and Peter's been in and out. So th- those some guys I see. Uh, rugby podcast equals alcohol. In fact, it does. And on that note, um, we'll I'm gonna take a short short pause as I uh, as I pour myself a bit, a bit of Fry Ranch, uh, Fallon Las Vegas's finest aged bourbon. Goodness gracious. And you know what's funny? Now what's they up? actually can see the drink. You have a drink every podcast. Now they actually can see the drink. I don't have a drink every podcast. I don't. I have to drink most podcasts. <laughs> 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 Listen, man, when we're talking about rugby league in the United States, we have to drink because sometimes it drives you to drinking. Yeah, um, it does. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, l- Listen, there, there is... Is it controversial that I, that I posted the stuff yeah it is but nobody else was going to do it and i raised the questions i do it I, you know again i have reached out to retro i have i multiple times um just paying homage to mr nate gladden see he knows he knows they, they, they know uh popcorn and whiskey we don't have any popcorn tonight but we're definitely drinking i drink bourbon nate's a whiskey guy i'm a bourbon guy um so you know it, it's i have reached out i i've told people like i've tried every way to reach out to retro yeah Sean Rutgerson coached the USA Hawks because I do want to. I want to ask the questions. Um, you know, maybe next time I won't post as quickly, <laughs> but hopefully there's not. Hopefully there's not a next time. And, and, and for those people that, that question, you know, my, you know, my approach and and what I've done to, uh, uh, I don't know, raise uh, issues with what the USA are all done. There have been issues in the past. There, uh, they are riding the ship. I will say that right now. Uh, the, the governance and everything is better. Uh, it's getting better. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, you know, they say like, oh, well, you know, you know, and I know Miranda said, you know, about saying the team, I would have gone talk to the coach if I didn't make the team. I don't, I mean, at the same time, there's 20 guys out in California and Utah that probably complained, um, that, that they didn't get a chance to represent the national team. Uh, I was just being a voice for them ahead of time. And as Real Deal Rugby says, because he's not coming on because he's got terrible internet connection, 
If I don't point it out, who will? Right. Um, hello, Seattle Barbarians rugby. Um, fancy a change, uh, adding and removing two players from your squad and playing a little uh, rugby league? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> With the drink, I know. Nah, I know. you know, you know what though? The, that that does. It's it's important that you do do that and you say those things, right? Even if in the way, even if they're controversial, because one of the main drivers of us wanting to expand to the West is to get a bigger pool of players, so that when we select a national team, we can have better, bigger, and better players than. Because usually what happens is we have a really good competition. We'll take a team to the World Cup. But as soon as it's about to be a World Cup team, they just flip it with a bunch of Aussies. And we don't have strong enough domestic players to stand up to what's going on. Yeah. Let's expand the pool market. Let's expand the pool, the player pool. But then we only select from half. You know what I mean? From, yeah. I mean it's just the it's, same thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Burroughs had commented, you know, like, we're, I'm not saying select mostly West Coast guys. Like, that's, you know, we don't. You don't select one or the other. You select the best players that you can get, right? And it takes time watching games, doing things like that. I, 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 I poke the bear, if you will, because I want to see the change. I want to get things better. I want to be, we need to be better at, as the USA and, and even Canada too, right? Because Canada's, they've got the national team, but they're not ready to go play in the World Cup yet. You know, they still have to, get their house in order like we're not the only ones this is not just us brazil's working to try to get their house in order as well and especially with the latest irl world cup world series qualifications and you know i'll allude to this but we'll talk about another podcast um because we don't want to go for five hours today um you know in order to qualify for the next the 2026 world cup and you know you have to be a full member by march 31st 2024 and to be a full member, there are some th- things that need to be, uh, you got to have a strategy, you got to have ethics, judiciary policies, all the other things. And some of the things that are important that you have to have is you need to have domestic participation for clubs. You know, we, we need to have at least four clubs in the U.S., which is what we have, but a junior U19s uh, and under a 15s, 19 competition with at least four teams and two rounds that we do not have. That's a huge one. We have women's, we have senior, we have clubs, we have player registration, we have the facilities. We do not have youth. And youth is the only way we grow this sport in the U.S. Period. And Lance, you've even said this on this podcast before. Yes, I have. And she said it a second ago when when I asked her about her future plans. She said she wanted to get into youth. So I think she she saw something that... (laughs) She saw this conversation happening before we did. So <laughs> I, I think she, I think she she was she was on calls with some other USAL stuff who might have talked to me earlier in the week and other things, knowing what I was going to talk about. Today. We'll just throw that out. So <laughs> yeah, no grassroots, no future. Right on. That's how it works. Okay, Lance, we're going to wrap up with uh, the last part. We started to talk about it, but we didn't. NRL, Viva. Las Vegas. Holy crap. Um, it, it feels as though, let's go back in our way back machine. Do you remember when you and I, like a year ago, we talked about this? And do you remember like when two years ago, Jim and I talked about this? <laughs> and we said, this shit is never happening. Yeah. Shit is happening. Like it, it's actually going like, we even said like, yeah, we came out like, yeah, we, we criticized it constantly. And, uh, Burroughs is out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry. Just, just mentioned. Ryan Burroughs, thanks for joining us on your nine, nine beers or 15 beers or however many you had while you're sitting down listening in at a bar. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring real deal on Dylan Farachi and hopefully he can stay on without crapping out again. Um, NRL Las Vegas, we've talked about it constantly. Oh, look, you're in a house, Dylan. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Wi Fi, what a concept. Um, Craig, you, you, you came on to talk about NRL Vegas, and so that's the only thing. I, I see how it is. <laughs> Those Sorry, I had to pick listening, up my sister at the uh, train what, station. Whatever. Yeah, it's fine. We don't. <laughs> the listeners don't care. Yo, Yo that was a second degree burn. He got me. Was it was like, like, set, like, dude, I got so many. Wi Fi, what a concert. <laughs> 
Get to the point where it's like I get the rock on there. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> this is what happens when you get drinking. Dustin, who's hosting the podcast, not as bad as Nate was when we had him on. Um, okay. Very true. I, I'm a, I, 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 I digress for those listening um, uh, on the podcast who aren't watching the video. You can't see what we're doing. Um, maybe I could try to post this on YouTube for the whole thing. Um, that would be fun. Uh, so we talked about it constantly. We talked about like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's a pain. It's too much of a hassle. <laughs> Shit. If Vlandy's and Abdo didn't just go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to go play at a Legion stadium in Las Vegas. And we're going to do it a first round of the, of the NRL 2024 season. Um, I'll be damn. I mean, yeah. honestly, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be damn. I'm, I'm as shocked as can be right now. Um, we will be the biggest supporters of it. We will be the biggest supporter. I mean, we'll be one of the biggest supporters of it. There's a lot of supporters. Everybody who is follows this podcast, everybody who is probably a rugby league player in the U.S. is either going, has already booked their flights or booked their tickets or is going. Uh, I talked with Sharon Lil. They're going. Um, our, our wonderful friends in Canada, uh, the ladies who are very big rugby league advocates. Um, they couldn't be on tonight. Uh, I did speak with Cher, and she is at the Toronto Maple Leafs home opener tonight because she's a Toronto fan. Um, somebody wishes the Cowboys were playing. I think they're, they're scheduled to play next year, actually. It's from what I understand. Um, okay. okay. So let's, let's dive into some information. Uh, 12,000 tickets have been sold to date. I need to buy mine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> tickets, you can get them for as low as 1950 on the Ticketmaster. And with the okay. Ticketmaster fees, it'll be 4750. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a question of, uh, logistics and, um, is the AR, is the NRL season over in Las Vegas? Yes, 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 it is. Yes, the, uh, you may have just missed it if you just joined us, but the NRL season round one, two matches. Uh, so you've got, uh, uh, sorry, I've got balloons coming up on my screen right now, and I have no idea. I was like, what the? It's flying in front of my face. Um, that's what happens when you're online. Um, you've got the, the Brisbane Broncos, and you've got um, the Roosters, and you've got the Bunnies, uh, the Rabbitohs, both Sydney teams. And, um, oh, I just had a brain, and Manly Sea Eagles. Um, some people are kind of saying, like, why those teams? You don't have Penrith, but Penrith is probably going to play in the World Club Challenge against whoever wins this weekend's match. That'll be interesting. Um, you know, it's nice to see people coming from all over. Like, right. Here's the thing 12,000 tickets have been sold already. You got four months. They haven't even started marketing in the US. I don't know if they will. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't like. Let, let, let me ask you this before I go into anything else. Lance, we'll come to you first. Do you think there will be any, any marketing in the U.S.? How, how many seats fill that stadium? 64,000. Are they, and, and they like got 64, they going to use the entire 64,000? Six, it appears that 64 are open. Okay. And they had twelve. Right uh, it now. appears. The, uh, my guess is they'll probably knock off part of the top part of the stadium. They and won't. They, there is there is zero chance. I, I I will, I will bet a bottle of this fine brown drink to one one of you um, that they do not fill sixty four thousand. There's no way they fill it. I would be sh- I would be shocked if they get over thirty eight. And I, I said, I've, I've, I've said this before. It's like, if they, they spill 40%, that. that's yeah, it. I think they can do that. But I think maybe the market would be more local. I don't see them doing some no. whole United States blitz where they're trying to get people from New York City to fly out. No. I think they're going to be West Coast and Nevada. Four-hour drives is going to be the best you're going to get. They're going to get everybody from Salt Lake City and places like that, but they're not, they're not going to market to the USA. There's no point. But I think they can get, I think they can get 40 but the only, record for the United States is nineteen thousand. So, but the that, record for a rugby league match in the United States—it wasn't nineteen thousand. I mean, it, 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 they said it was. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 I'm saying. Uh, what, 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 you, you, you're, 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 you're talking about the, the, the England New Zealand game yeah. in 
in Mile High Stadium yes. the same day as a Colorado Rockies game. I was there. There was no way there was 19,000 people there. I- <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, the record is 19,320. Okay, so, so you're only 7,000 off of the record. But still, if you only get to the, the, the minimum, that's only filling a third of a Legion Stadium. That stadium is expensive. <laughs> yeah. The Super Bowl is played there two weeks prior, by yeah. the way. Two weeks prior to that game, to the NRL start of the season, the Super Bowl. The, the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> they included the staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they probably didn't include the staff in that mile high game. <laughs> that was it's terrible. It was a disaster. And the um, yeah, they included. So every- yeah, um, uh, yes, it. something tells me that those matches will inspire a Vegas rugby league club uh, to emerge. Uh, I may know of one that already is starting. Ooh. Talk your talk. Whispers, 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 whispers and rumors, baby, for another day. Um, okay. Dylan, do you think they'll do any marketing? I think they'll out, outside of outside of Las Vegas, outside of a four hour radius. So we'll, maybe we'll give it LA, right? Maybe LA because you have two teams that are training there or three. Uh, uh, you have you have confirmed one. Brisbane Broncos one. You have okay. the. Manly will probably be in Utah. Yep. Um, yeah. Manly will be in Utah. Uh, as for, from what I hear, right? Because the owner of the Manly also owns a stake in the Utah Jazz. Makes a fun fact. Um, I think they'll do some cross promotions with those NFL teams. Because I'm well, the Rams. The Rams have already. The Rams have already yeah, done that. But like right now, I'm working the USA Germany soccer match this weekend. Yep. In Connecticut, and. Germany right now is host, is practicing at New England Revolution site, and the Patriots are already there cross promoting with them. And then the U.S. national teams right now is in Nashville, and they're com- cross cross promoting with Tennessee. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do some cross promotion with the local teams. Utah will be a little difficult. I think the Jazz will probably be there or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, maybe it's, like, it's not uh, it's it's not the NFL, which is tough, yeah. right? Because that's what you want. Uh, <laughs> Vancouver Dragons. Um, hello, Josh. Question mark. <laughs> One thing I do hope is that they contact some of the local Vegas teams. Now that Vegas has teams, so like the Aces or the Raiders. Yeah, you, you know that the Aces. Well, you mean the oh the Aces? Like uh, basketball. Vegas. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about. Like, I mean, listen. The NBA team. Okay, I was like, because there was a Vegas yeah. Aces uh, NARL team. But it was. Oh, the blackjacks. Blackjack. That's what it was. Sorry. But like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, reach out to those like teams that are already in Vegas. Try to get, like try to get Jimmy G there. Like, be be ballsy and get someone there. Or even um, who's that? That wife of the yeah, like that couple on TikTok that's famous for the Raiders. <laughs> I can't remember the top. But my Lance, I'm tired. You know anybody on who's I don't know. Uh, TikTok famous from the Raiders. Like, it, there, his wife's more famous than he is. Like, he's on the. Practice. That's a football player. He got traded to like the Giants or Jets or something. But it's it's the girl that is she played for the uh, Vegas Aces. No, 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 Plum. not her, not her, not Plum? Allison Cush. I think Allison Cush. I could be wrong. I have no idea who you're talking about. Like he's like he's a lineman and he's very like they just had a kid. I think. Or Continue. Anyway, but anyway, so. cross promoting with the local teams and trying to get those like high level names and like people who are in Vegas, like try to get them over to the game right, so, so, or promote the game. Yeah, here's what's not happening: the NRL teams are not going to be in Vegas for a full two weeks ahead of time. Yeah, ain't no way. Here's why: because they don't want them to get in trouble. <laughs> ain't no way. Uh, Golden Knights and an NHL champions. Yeah, right. That'd be a good one. Uh, Taylor Swift's. Uh, that's not going to happen either. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm reading comments of people. Oh. Who are, uh, yeah. I mean, Swifty. I, I'd love, I'd love T Swift to be uh, at that game, but that's not going to happen. Um, you know, I, I think there will be marketing. So Russell Crowe, um, you're going to get, you know, so you'll get your Russell Crows, you'll get your Chris Hemsworths, you'll yeah. get your uh, yeah. Hugh Jackman's going on television shows to talk about this. I don't. I mean, it's not going to be big anywhere else. 
is, I mean, I don't see, I don't know. Right. So high up seats, 19 bucks, further they move down. Here's the issue. The best seats are reserved right now for the NRL Las Vegas Platinum Package, where you'll stay at the Win or the Encore. And these are for NRL, uh, he, you know, NRL members in the U.S. Um, sorry, I, I was reading a, a, a note and I, I lost track. So NRL club personnel, people in Australia to come over to the U.S., and for three, four, or five nights, it starts. It starts for one one room, one ticket, twenty seven forty nine in Australian dollars. I don't know what that is in real money, um, but it's <laughs> I don't know twenty seven forty nine in Monopoly money. I don't know. Like I don't. <laughs> but the reason why you brought that hat. It is. He was high. <laughs> Himself. He doesn't want to be affiliated with my smart ass comics. <laughs> yeah, that's like, real. Like, yeah! <laughs> yeah. So, somebody find out what twenty seven forty nine is, you, uh, Australian into U.S. dollars, and then let me know. Uh, D- Dylan, you can get on that. And so um, anyway, so so that so that's one of the big issues. It's like people. So there there's some Facebook groups that I'm part of. Um, the NRL Vegas group. It's a great group good people on there. Uh, if anybody from there is on, uh, I appreciate you joining. If anybody mm-hmm. listens later, um, it, it's a fun group to be on and see where everybody's at, you know, planning some big events. But, you know, 2749, like, that doesn't include flights over from Australia. That's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, right. So we're, we're talking about, uh, Jason was saying, like, cross promoted with sports betting at the casinos resorts. Like, that's the number one thing. Like, Glendies has come out and said, like, that's that is like the key thing is like he wants to get sports betting into the what's that cycling rugby fan says works out to 1770 us how come i don't see that it's uh did he just i'm the the third comment up oh okay i missed that so 1770 dollars that's just to stay for for three nights and (laughs) one ticket that is a shit ton of money like those are for the that's for prime seats that's between the thirty yard, the the, uh, the thirty meter lines on each side, right in the middle. Um, is you know. it one ticket per game, or is it just one ticket a match? No, no, right? it's one ticket for both. Oh, for both. So it's two, it's two matches. But still, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, so that's that's the issue. People are people are complaining that it is super expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, for us, you know, ticket and and I don't even know if that's ticket master fees included. Maybe. Um, you know, you get a ten percent discount on Qantas flights if you fly to Vegas that way. What a Qantas flight that is! So it's still, it's not cheap. Um, Lance, I don't. <laughs> Lance, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to you and and, <laughs> and what's making you laugh right now? Uh, this is funny, man. I'm just <laughs> in real money. I'm still stuck on that. <laughs> But no, nah, um, I'm still kind of confused on why they blocked off the middle. Like they don't want to waste the uh, the good seats on us Americans or something. Like, but but I am uh, I'm excited for the entirety of this thing. We got to, we got to figure it out. I'm gonna have to be out there, man. But listen, it, it is exciting, right? Um, there's other talks, right? So there's talks of there's whispers and rumors. So here we go, whispers and rumors of things that are happening. Um, a combine. This has been this has been said by uh, by Abdo, so this is not really this is not a rumor that there's going to be a a combine or a training camp of sorts to attract football and rugby players in the U.S. So Lance, you and I are doing this. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard Toronto will fly you out to play him. I gotta, I gotta get back into it. Yeah, right. Oh man, I'm gonna go out and try. <laughs> okay, so okay, so here, here's my first question with that for you guys: who, Who's who are they going to get? We heard we heard Ryan talk earlier, right? So this is good to have him on here, saying that you know these teams, you know, the players that go and play over overseas, and like Ryan played just below, played New South Wales Cup, so he played just below NRL level. Has he said like? It is a. It's hard. Like it is completely different. Who's going to go to this combine? Are you going to get 
are you do you think you get D one like we'll call it Power Five football conference? Uh, Power Five uh, for those of you that don't know are the t- the five biggest conferences in the United States in uh, American Gridiron College football. Um, okay, now they have it. Um, do you think they will go and do that? Do you think they'll get anybody to go to that kind of combine and try out? Yep. How many do you get, Lance? How many do you get? Well, if they get, let's say they get three hundred people to come to this combine, that's way too much. That's an inflated number. Sorry, I, I didn't. You, your your mic broke up. I didn't hear. Say, let's say if they get three hundred people to come to this Holy combine, and that's shit. an inflated number. Yeah, right. That's a very inflated number. Maybe about fifteen of them will be D one. Now, there's always the guys that are like super athletes that like just ain't gonna make it in football, and they know it. That's looking for an, a way for them to be athletes in some kind of game or sport. You can pull those kind of guys, and it's the perfect time. March is the perfect time to do it. But they've done this kind of thing before, and they 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 did a bunch of football, rugby, and Aussie rules too. J- Jason they, J- Jason put up there; he knew about it. The, so Aussie rules did it with some former D one wide receivers. Yep. And this a couple of years ago too. Uh, he also. Said, J- Jason, uh, by the way, for those of you listening, uh, uh, Jason is you know, one of the listeners, said followers right now, uh, also a player. Uh, he said, you'll get the guys who didn't crack the XFL and USFL. USFL. I don't think so. I, do, I, don't, I don't think they'll market it enough to get those players out there. Isn't there an American on an AFL team? Yeah, they won. Collinwood. Yeah. I know people are going to hate me that I know that, but yes, I do know that an American... Uh, what's his name? Cox. I think he's a Texan, actually. Yeah, uh, he's from Houston. 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 We got a problem. Uh, Houston, <laughs> Texas. Uh, yeah, he's a Mason Cox is his name. He's a monster. Yeah. Like he's a big. He's like six seven something like that. Like, he's a oh, big okay. dude. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's a big, big dude. He, he's he's a perfect AFL player. Um, you know. Okay, so that there's that. I don't. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a, it's great. Earlier, Copperheads were on and said this combine that is kind of a media, you know, this is just a media ploy, um, is a great opportunity for U.S. player for U.S. teams to go and bring people, like say, hey, you didn't make the NRL team, but why don't you come play rugby league with us now? We should be promoting this. We as, as U.S. should say, hey. You want to play? You want to you want to experience this game? Come here and play. Get the chance. D two, D three, JUCO. Yes, Jason, I got it. Who never get a pro shot to come out? Do what Burroughs did in DC. Come out. Get the potential. We have to market it. The problem is, well, USARL doesn't have the money to market this or or really run this program that effectively. Now, if we can get sponsorship, that's a whole other story. But as of right now. Controversy. Ooh, I said something bad. Um, you know, I I don't think that we're at the point yet to get that, Dylan. No. I don't. No. I don't think we'll get that many. Like Lance, so like I would say maybe max ten, power five. You might get some like UNLV players because right. You need- you're right. You're right. There. Okay. Okay. So let let's let's take out. Utah, Colorado. <laughs> Let's say it like four corners, right? So Utah, Colorado, Nevada, um, Arizona, and, and I'd say you may you may get some players from from LA. Yeah, that's only because you're, you're going to have an association with the Rams yeah. and wherever um, the Rabbitohs end up going, which is rumored to be San Diego uh, to, to do their stuff. For the Power Five football guys, I would say at max ten because like they're making enough money with NIL. Oh, yeah, like especially look, look, look at what Bronny's making right now. God, God that's Bronny. Come on, but that's Bronny. Don't do that. Don't no, do I know, but he hasn't even stepped on the court. What's, yeah, but that's Bronny. What's though. what's what's, what's, what's Sanders making at quarterback at Colorado? Millions, but that's that's Sanders. I know, I, but that's I, 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 I know. I, I, about. Still, like, well, I know, but like they're not gonna. I mean, I mean, one, you're not going to get a quarterback to go no. play rugby league. So you're uh, looking for uh, <laughs> linebackers and linemen. That's what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You're looking for everything but. I want everybody but a quarterback, and I want punters. 
I want, yeah, I want to. I mean, punters are you, get a, well, you get a smart punter, man. I'm telling you, you get a guy that can boot it. I want him at, I want him at five, eight, or if I, I want see, <laughs> like English and Scott, like Aussie kickers, since I've been working at UConn football stadium, a lot of teams that have been playing against us have foreign kickers. Yeah. And they are good. Like one of them actually made a tackle a few games ago. I think it was Duke. Get him out there. Get that guy. Yeah. Right. Get that. Yeah. But anyway. Duke against UConn, but still. I, I want free safeties. I want nickelbacks. I want. Yeah. I want some. I want some tight ends. I want so all. They of can them. be my props. I want all. I want all of them. I want some. I want some full. I want some good old fashioned fullbacks, man. I want running quarterbacks. I want them all. Yeah. I want. I want, I want guys. I want guys like Roderick Waters, man. That's yeah. who I want. Yeah, that's, not, yeah, that's who. I, but I, I, I got to uh, tell. I got to tell Rod to say it. Um. Anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. I think I don't, I don't think we're going to get much. Yeah. So that's one wi- one that's not really a whisper rumor. Yeah. Uh the other one is uh there have been reports of a pathways program being set up. I don't know if that's true. A pathways program in the US uh a bunch of David Stills. I like David. David was in Austin while I was down there. Um but I don't I don't think David's a rugby l- he's a rugby league winger, I think. I don't think he's anything else. He's he's fast, ain't no doubt about it. And he got he got moves, but that dude's a mutant. That, okay, I, I think he's I think a mutant. I would listen. There's guys that play union right now in the U.S. that I would love to see switch coats. I, Corey Jones, I'd love to see him switch coats. Never will. I, I'm, but he should. He, 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 ne- he never will. But he should. Uh, I mean, Corey is Corey was in Austin when I was down in Austin, and man. I, Corey's a good dude, and I like, like him a whole lot. David's a good guy. Um, I like those guys. Uh, will they switch? Nah. Nah. They're going to play. They're going to play seven. Not gonna, yeah, seven, seven's in fifteen. So, but but this path, um, would it just be Americans going over to. Nah, it, it, it would be. So what I understand about the pathways for the NRL Vegas stuff, starting off is going to be as of right now, will be coaches coming over and coaching uh, sporadically to set up pathways. Um, somebody wants to know if he wants to switch codes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll let Lance say that one. Um, I, I, I think I, the coaches are supposed to come over here, instruct, maybe send some people back over. Listen, there is, I, I will say this right now, there is nobody in the U.S. that can go at this particular point in time and play in the NRL. Zero. Yeah. Lance, what, is that, what kind of land? There's nobody here. Nope. And, oh, and if there is somebody here, they're five years past the point they were supposed to do it. Ten years past that point, there's I, nobody I right now walking around U.S. homegrown that can walk into an NRL field and compete. I, I'm, I'm, that's not even a statement. That's like now the level underneath it. Well, yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe the level underneath that. Yeah, yeah. we we got some people. We can we but, can play two levels down. New South Wales Cup, Queensland Cup. You may get it five, if that. And they got a. There is nobody off the bench. And they, and they're, they're yeah, they ain't stuck. Playing time. There, there is not a single athlete in the U.S. right now that can play NRL. Not one. right now. Not one. Now. Not one. You know, there's been media reports and people on. On stuff over at the uh, 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 Fox and uh, NRL 360 that said, "Oh yeah, we can. We've had players come over like years ago, and they brought four players over. I, we can't find any record of that. We can't find the guys that actually went and played for them." Um, they're but from it's, America, it's just, Samoa. No, no, they're from the U.S. <laughs> no, that, that's, saying, like, that's, uh, the, that's yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, America, Samoa. <laughs> anyway, so the, so who knows what's going to happen with that uh, pathways. There have been other people who have whispered that there. Somebody said, told me that there was a West, that the NRL wanted a West versus Northeast game. I have not heard any confirmation of that. The only thing that I've heard of being a, that that would be ridiculous to have a West versus Northeast, like an RLU versus PCRL match. That's just terrible. That would be a dumb thing to do in the first place. Um, because you neglect the rest of the USRL South, kind of like what they did with the US teams. Selected. Um, it's a reverse, uh, but what it what has been uh, thrown around, and I have heard multiple people confirm this, 
a Friday night USA Canada match. Ooh. Would that be no. a No, it would not be at a Legion Stadium. Are you serious? You never There's no way in hell. Uh, it would be, be at some middle school it was, three miles it, away. It would be at an elementary school field. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. So, that, so that's I, I, I'm I'm lightly joking on that one. It would probably be at a high school football field and or um, a college football field. Yeah. Um, I mean, so uh, Jason just left a comment. I've always wanted to challenge myself or test myself with the lower leagues in Australia. Start at the bottom, work my way up. Man, I can tell you, I've got connections. If you're if you're interested in going over to Australia. To play rugby league and want to do it, but play rugby league in war, reach out. I'll put you in contact with some people. Uh, I know about three or four people who recruit on a regular basis. Um, we'll see what we can do. If you want to test it out, It'd be fun. There's yeah, a couple, let them test it out. Th- th- let them test it out. There's a couple people who are who are playing over in Australia right now who are Americans. Um, what's that? Shout out to Clark. Shout out to Turbo. Turbo, yeah. Turbo's over there. Uh, I feel bad. I've told Turbo that I need to get an interview because I want to see how things are going over there with him, and I've been terrible about Jeez. it. So, um, he's playing football now. He's doing a whole bunch of other stuff. I know he is, and yeah. I've been bad. I, yeah. So anyway, um, the last part of the NRL Vegas, somebody said, so the Wolf Pack against the rest. <laughs> That's funny. That goes back to earlier in the show where we talked about how the Toronto Wolf Pack is pretty much the Canada national team. Um, Minus like two guys, I think, or one or two guys. Anyway, um, the last part of it is, will we be there? Will Rugby League in America be at the NRL in Las Vegas? We'll see. We are, in, uh, we are, we are in discussions. I have, I have submitted proposals. I have painstaking. Can leak on through and submit a proposal. Uh, I hope I have been in conversation with the NRL, with NRL, uh, some officials, um, some other people. Emails have been exchanged, text messages have been exchanged. Um, my goal, and I'll say this right here and right now, um, is that I would love for rugby league in America to be there. I've talked with Sharon Lil. Uh, they would join our uh, our merry band of men. Um, to uh, add some estrogen to the show, which I think we desperately need. So thanks, Miranda, for coming on and adding that estrogen that we so desperately need sometimes. <laughs> Lance, <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> Dear Lord, please. Dear Lord, yeah, right. Um, but, you know, uh, so, so I've been, I, I submitted a proposal. Um, so I'm going to let you guys know what, what the plan is, what I would like to do. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. So first of all, the plan, um, we, we'll, we want to conduct interviews. I have, uh, so we have some connections and there is, I am hoping that next week I'm talking with a current Brisbane Bronco and we'll interview a current Brisbane Bronco who might or might have not just played in the grand final. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, how about how about that? Yeah. You guys didn't even you guys didn't you guys didn't even know that one. <laughs> nope. um, but the goal is to kind of work in partnership with the NRL. We'd love to kind of be the new Amer- the American voice of what happens, right? So who better to talk about NRL in America and rugby league in America than rugby league in America? Um, I think it's obvious. You know, we 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 are the only media outlet that does it. Um, <laughs> And so it's it's one of the things that yeah for better or worse we're the only media. It's only us. Uh, it's <laughs> only, only us. us. <laughs> you're you're, not good. you're gonna get what you get. What's that, Dylan? We have no competition yeah. at the moment. <laughs> Great, and and nor do I think we will. Um, and so you know w- what we're gonna do well, is we won't even see him as competition. We'd be like no. more people talking like, rugby. Like who are, who are, who are you? Join us. Come on. Let's uh, have a chat. But 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 the goal is is this, all right? So one, uh, put a lot of content out. We want to conduct interviews. We want to talk to Americans who are excited about the NRL coming. Uh, share that with the NRL. We want to talk with NRL players, coaches, and people who are coming over. Share that with the NRL. Share that with our fans as well. Then, on the Thursday night, 
or potentially Friday, if this USA game happens, we want to have a live show ahead of time where you can see all of our fun faces in person um, to potentially do a live show in front of in front of a crowd. We'll have Dylan out in the crowd uh, constantly coming in and out um, all the time, Mike coming off and on because he's here, but yet he's not here. Um, that will be the first part of it. And so I think that that would be great for him to, to, to do that. He'll be the guy on the crowd with microphone, but yet we lose him every, every 10 time. minutes. <laughs> um, camera doesn't work. Camera does, his, his camera doesn't work. He's out there. His microphone doesn't work. And it's like, so that's what we, that's, that's Dylan's role while we're, while we're in Vegas. Um, the, <laughs> the other part is, you know, have an interview. We want to talk to people, talk to fans. We want to talk to Aussies who are coming over to America for the first, you know, to watch a match for the first time. Like, how great is that? Um, to show them that, yes, America can be a, 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 a growth for rugby league in the world. Um, it, it can be. It's going to take a lot of work. Yes. I'm not going to let I me mean, you know. We ain't, we ain't dicking around with it. It's going to take a shit ton of work. Um, but on that, you know, we'll do that. And then hopefully be able to go call a USA, USA Canada game after that. Be great. Um, There's a, you know, just, one part of the Vegas trip you forgot. Oh, yes. And you reminded me earlier. Um, wheelchair Rugby League. They are playing. Oh man, I'm I'm going to watch wheelchair rugby league. If it's on that Wednesday before or Thursday before, we're at wheelchair rugby league that's because cool. that sh- shit is the real deal. That's the real deal rugby. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, know, I never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, wheelchair rugby league more than wheelchair rugby. I love wheelchair rugby. It looks league. more like rugby than it does. Like, like you have goalposts and they are able to you do conversion. Man, it's- See, wheelchair rugby league is you can still go back on fight tv and watch the yeah. world cup final on that go like that match was crazy this will play um okay yes yeah, so i didn't forget about that and then on saturday at the day of the final um we'll try to we would like to try to do another live show uh talk with sharon low like they want to join in they want to be a part of this yeah they want they're a part of our team basically and then during the game um, if you haven't seen it in the U.S., um, Pat McAfee likes to do like a side, like uh, kind of like what the Manning brothers do for Monday Night Football. Pat McAfee on college football goes to the sideline on ESPN2 and basically just talks about the game that's happening from the end zone. So you can't really see everything. But just to be on the sideline, talk to people who are there, talk to fans, talk to ex-players, talk to current players, talk to people who are just involved with the game. That is uh, always that that would be like an ideal thing if we can get happening. So that's the plan that I have submitted to the NRL. Will they accept it? Possibly. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. <laughs> I know. But I mean. I'm, we're not asking for them to fly me out there or anything. Let's cover that. I just want that. We, we're just trying to make sure that we can get some passes, and we want to partner with them to show that we can grow the, the game. And yes, up the waz. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can Too add SB's uh, nuts to help us. <laughs> they probably can sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Relief. Man, well, gentlemen, um, that's a whole lot of shit to cover in a live episode. Let's recap for the fans real quick what we did. We talked about the RLU finals with DC beating Brooklyn 40 to 22. We talked about the USARL finals. And then we had Ryan Burroughs come on the show. We had Ryan Burroughs talk about the situation with the U.S. men's national team selection, how nobody from the West Coast was originally selected. Uh, but you had RLU players who were selected, then deselected. Uh, don't know what the status is there. We then talked about, uh, we started to talk about uh, NRL Vegas. We talked a little bit of Toronto Wolfpack. Then we talked with Miranda Bernard, who came on and um, was very kind. Very, 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 sh- very sweet. A very, very sweet, sweet, sweet Miranda came <laughs> on sweet and, <laughs> and was very nice to me because she could have been really mean and she could have been. Uh, but she was very great. 
uh, came on, talked about what it was about this election, things like that. And we talked about the women's championship, the uh, women's American championship. Canada wins the first ever championship over the USA and Jamaica. Jamaica wins, uh, sorry, uh, the USA beat Jamaica 78-8 in the first game, lost to Canada 38-4, and Jamaica lost to Canada 58-2 in the final game. Um, and of course, you know, the growth of the women's game is so important and it's vital. Uh, we alluded to World, Qu- World Cup and World Series qualifications that just came out with the IRL. Didn't have enough time to talk about that, knowing that we need to grow the sport in the U.S. and get a youth going more. Because if we don't, getting full membership for the IRL is key. Because if we don't have full membership for the IRL, we do not go to the World Cup, even if we beat Jamaica. Uh, right now in the Americas, only Jamaica is a full member, by the way. Just for those of you listening, only Jamaica, no Brazil, no anybody else. Um, and then NRL Vegas is happening after two years of us giving them so much shit. It's happening. Um, and yeah. Woo. And Brian Burroughs had 17 beers. Uh, Lance had zero. He had three bottles of water. Uh, <laughs> really real deal. deal. Dylan Farachi came on 47 times and disappeared 49 times somehow. And uh, I've <laughs> consumed three and a half glasses of <laughs> I think like fry, fry ranch <laughs> distiller selection. 133 poo, 66% alcohol. <laughs> and yet, oh, and yet, and and yet through all, and yet through all of that, I still managed to recap everything and host a lovely live episode of Rugby League in America. Absolutely. Shout Dylan, out to real deal. Uh, as I say, last last thoughts, Dylan Farachi, before your internet craps out on you and you disappear. <laughs> Let's keep growing the game. Um, and hopefully see you guys in Vegas, finally in person. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, fun fact for all of you listening and watching, we have actually never, never met in person man. before. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It's because the United States is fucking yep. huge. Massive. Massive. But yeah, we're all on the East Coast. What's that? We're all- yeah, we, yeah, we all live on the East Coast, yet we go literally the entire length of the East Coast. Yep. From New, from New England to, the, to Mid-Atlantic to, the, to, to Florida. I think I think Lance, you're probably the closest. You're probably you're where are you located? Down outside of Miami. Miami. Eight eight and a half hour drive. <laughs> to Charlotte? Oh, at least an Ooh. eight hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're like a ten hour drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dylan, you're probably about the same. Yeah. Like it's probably equidistant. So. Yeah. Um anyway, uh thanks to everybody who jumped on. Um again, Nate Bros. Uh, sorry, I saw uh, Nate Gladden would be proud. So I appreciate that. Nate Gladden will be proud of us for drinking so much. Um, Ryan Burroughs, thanks for jumping on. Miranda Bernard, thank you for coming on. Uh, you guys are great. Um, who else was on this entire, you know, for extensive period of time? Um, ah, Jason Jackson, man, you have stuck through it. Uh, Alan Taylor, uh, cycling rugby fan, you, you guys have been on for a long time. Um, listening from the great white north up in Canada. Vancouver, they had some guys on today too. Lots of people. Um, what a great show. Lance gets the hat on. Uh, for those of you that joined at the very end, sorry, we're, we're wrapping up. We are now going on uh, four hours. We haven't gone for four hours. You kiss my ass. Two and a half hours. We're not even that. <laughs> uh, this show will come out uh, on Spotify. And all of our uh, all of our streaming platforms soon. If you guys want to get the USA fifty three replica jerseys, those are the next order will be going on pre sale probably next week. So go buy those. Uh, for those of you that already ordered, man, oh man, you, you got a special gift coming for you uh, here soon too. Um, and then uh, let's see, uh, national championship for the Dead Pelicans. All that gear, Brooklyn Kings gear is on our website. Where can you find everything? It's rugbyleagueinamerica.net. That's where you can find it. Uh, parting thoughts, Lance Cavanaugh. Um, controversy is awesome. Uh, shout out to the sponsor of our women's national team, D's, D's Nuts. Nuts. 
And um, <laughs> much love and congratulations to the Dead Pelicans for winning the national championship. Selection will be better, but first we need youth teams. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, <laughs> an exciting episode of Rugby League in America. Um, two and a half hours, our longest show to date. Our Gosh. longest show. Nate actually did one for three hours one time, and that is way too long. <laughs> um, but no, we really appreciate everybody That's for listening. Uh, really appreciate everybody who stayed on, who's come on at any point in the show. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for helping grow the game in each way that you do. Thank you for being a part of this great community we call Rugby League. That's Dylan Faraci, Real Deal Rugby, who actually did not cut out in this part because he has Wi-Fi. Uh, that in the bottom is Lance Cavanaugh, kind of right here. Lance Cavanaugh, Great American Rugby. Follow him on all social media. My name is Dustin Zare. The man with the mic is right here. We appreciate you joining. Follow us on wherever you can. Until next time, this has been Rugby League in America. Okay.